All right, welcome back to Split Decision. Before we handle our normal business, Christian is in France. So we have a special guest this week, a good friend of ours, Marquest. He's the head football coach at our local high school. He's an all-around great dude. Uh, welcome to, show, to the show. Glad to have you. All right, this week on episode 44, we're going to dive into the NBA playoffs. Then we're going to give our take on the NFL draft. Following that, we're going to do our own draft of top five draft picks. And to round things off, we're going to go with UFC St. Louis. Good preview of that. That's Derek Lewis versus Rodrigo Nascimento. That's this weekend, May 11th. May 11th. Don't want to sound too stupid. (laughs) And don't forget Mother's Day on Sunday, May 12th. But before you do all of that, head to splitdecisionpod.com where you're going to see all of our recent episodes, top five drafts, everything we have. All right, let's go. All right, so today we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, First off, we're pretty much just going to have uh, like a live discussion on NBA playoffs. Uh, We're going to start with the Western Conference semifinals. This is the Mavericks fifth rank taking on the number one seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. It's a good series so far, or at least Mavericks to get in this far was kind of put up a good series. You know, they won three to two. Um, who are they? Who'd they play again? I forgot. The series before? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember. I can click it real click quick. Click it right quick. Um, but yeah, the Mavericks uh, beat the Clippers. They That's upset the Clippers. Was. That's what it was. The old Clippers, all the injuries and whatnot. Right. Paul George still there, hanging in there. Kawhi Leonard still got bad knees. Hey, it happens. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, so they moved on. They got pretty much stomped out game one, 117 to 95, as we expect. Uh, Shy Gilgis Alexander, I've never seen him good on the Thunder. I don't know how many seasons he's played on the Thunder. How many has he? I want to say like three or four because he got traded from the Clippers after the second, third year. Okay. Uh, the Clippers, Doc Rivers was really, really upset. They traded him, and it, that, I think it was the Chris Paul trade or whatever the case may be. I'm not sure 100%. But uh, because he saw a future superstar, he averaged, like, I want to say 18 as a rookie. Damn. Uh, I may be wrong. You can check that. But uh, oh, We don't have to worry about stat checking. Yeah, he, he, he's that guy, man. He, he, he wants the ball. Uh, I think he averaged, like, 30-something this year. Now, it looks like Luka only scored 19. They're yeah. playing – when are they playing? Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. So – Luke is averaging 28.3 points a game. I mean, if he if he puts up his season average, Kyrie comes in, you know, does does what he needs to do. I don't see why Dallas couldn't win a game. I know it's like heavily stacked against them. Yeah. But da- it seems like Dallas gets themselves to this position often. That's mm-hmm. why they acquired Kyrie, right? Is they yeah. were trying to find a way to get Luka help enough to get past the semifinals. But is it enough? I don't know. I mean, who's on um, outside of uh, Alexander on the exactly. on the enough. Thunder? Who's there? Who, you, you who do have, they have? have? I'm not Giddy. familiar. You have Giddy, who I love, who I was hoping that the Pelicans would draft. Uh, Giddy was a quitty too. <laughs> yeah, so he's good to go, right? So I can talk good about him now. Yeah, yeah, he's, okay, he's cool. a good guy. All right, certified so good guy. I think he's one of those point shooting guards who can handle the rock. Uh, his, his shooting's become better. He's long. That's the thing with the Thunder, man. They're extra long. They're lanky, and uh, it's not a real. Pro- it's a problem for Luca, but it's definitely a problem for Kyrie. Man, yeah. being five foot six, I've never been told I'm extra long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to basketball. Uh, that was a good one, uh, but Luca uh, is going to have to be Luca, like twenty eight, ten, and ten. Now they're still playing at at. Oklahoma, right? Yeah, it's still Oklahoma. So it's still it's not a series yet until a road win, a road team wins. Uh, but I think for Dallas to steal this game, Luca is going to have to give you about twenty eight to thirty, and Kyrie is going to have to give you about the same. Man, I wish I had the stats on uh, whether or not like Luca's lost back to back games in the playoffs, or like you know, like what his consist, what his rates are for. You know, doing that. They're currently a plus 160 money line underdog, the Mavericks. Okay. So it's a lot closer than I expected it being a number one to a five seed. They have Luka. But they have Luka. They have Kyrie. Yeah, the names. Uh, 
Man, OKC is tough. They don't have the names, but the, the guy that plays defense, let me let me go ahead and cheat right quick and see his name. Uh, he is the problem for Luka. Is he still on there? I may be wrong. I may be old. Dort. Yeah. That's his name. Okay. He was like a um, – I accidentally found out who this guy was because I was watching the game one weekend. This is like a couple of years ago. He's an undrafted guy who has a chip on his shoulder who became a de- – who's a defensive specialist. His job is to guard the best guy and just be a menace. Like, he only played 26 minutes, but if you look at his plus minus, he's a plus 18. So, that means he's – while he's on the so, – So, we like we, – we think that we're uh, more of a podcast for normal people. So, if, if somebody doesn't know – like, my wife listens. Okay. She doesn't know what a plus 18 is. So, it's basically as you are on a pose- possession, did you have a positive or a negative impact on that possession? Okay. Like, if, for example, if I'm playing against you one-on-one, if you score a bucket on me because of poor defense, that's a minus, it's not a plus. Right. If in that situation I locked you down, that's a plus, not a minus. Man, they now, need to. They, that's how they educate people in 2K with the, v, with the V-Coins. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you get a good assist, you get, you get you know, one or two V-Coins with a little plus. Assist, they, take a, they take the little things down, you let the thing go down. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, a, know, it's a good so, thing, like, learning how it actually impacts whether they pay you more, whether your stats, you know, are better overall. Yeah, it, it's yeah. fun to play like that. Yeah. Um, I think game two is going to be very interesting. Who do you pick winning game two, Oklahoma City Thunder versus Mavericks? My eyes and the math teacher and me look at these stats, say it's OKC. But man, look at that dude. Bro. Luka's a he really dog. is. Like, he's seeing him talk. To, can, can we, are we allowed to say certain words on this podcast? Yeah, you can do your best. Okay, see, seeing him talk shit to these NBA players, the way he the way he talks to them and calling guys small and say, boy, you can't guard me. Luke is that dude. He does back it up. Oh, he backs it up. And it's just him. Like, I like us. I love some Kyrie Irving, but he plays no defense. And now, he's six foot two. Add a little bit more for you. Okay. Before you make your, like, final draw in this game, Thunder have won. They're 10 in a row. They won 10 straight. True. You know, um, but it's like you said, it's Luca. He's that dude. I mean, there's a lot of things. It's close odds. Um, Mavericks, you know, they're they're better in points. You know, points for they're better in rebounds. But the Thunder's better in assists, three point percentage, and field goal percentage. Like you said, the Thunder doesn't have as big of names that the Mavericks do. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a long series. You know, yeah. at some point, Luca had a bad game on we, on game one. It was 19 points. What was it? Seven rebounds? It, something like that. It it wasn't the performance you used to seeing out of him. They lost by 22. Yeah. Good he, if he puts up his normal 28, they lost by 12. And Kyrie puts up eight more. They lose by four. So eight, then it's 10. a game. You it's know, I know I'm speculating. Yeah, but I understand. Like, oh. I understand. It's closer than what it looks. Right. I think Mavericks are going to win game two. That's your pick, Mavericks? Mavericks, yeah. I rode with them on, on winning, beating the Clippers in that series. I'm going to keep riding with them. I don't think they necessarily beat the Thunder in this series, but I think they win game two. If, if there's a game for the Mavericks to steal, it'd be this one. Uh, I'm looking at these numbers again. Good guy. And my, my boy Josh Giddy had a terrible game. And they still won by 20. Yeah. If he comes out and they, you know, Shy performs and Giddy performs, then it's another blowout victory, maybe. Jalen Williams is at, so. Luke is that dude. I'm going with Dallas. I'm sorry. I, I just, I just, I just, I just can't. Um, if I'm betting my money, I'm going to go with Luca because basketball is not a numbers thing. Sometimes that guy just shows up because, you know, you doubt me. Totally, totally fair. All right. Let's jump over to another game tomorrow. I'm sorry, not another game. Well, no, it is another game tomorrow. Um, that'll be Eastern Conference semifinals, Cavaliers versus Celtics. The number four seed taking on the number one seed again. Mm-hmm. Boston leads 1-0. and You know, it was kind of contentious coming in. It's, it's hard for, you know, the Cavaliers to play. They're kind of the same thing where they're, they're not a big name team yeah. right now. Yeah. Where... You got the Celtics. Loaded with names. Yeah, everybody's got a name on them. Jalen Brown, who, like, he's 
I don't want to say the the knowest name, the biggest nobody. He's the highest paid nobody in the history of highest paid nobodies. Because you know him, but you don't know him. Right. Yeah, I okay. couldn't pick him out of a lineup, but goddamn, I've heard his name. He's put up 30 times. points, 30 yeah. points, not a game, but 30 points in so many games this season. It's it's ridiculous, yeah, it's or at least game. as much as I've heard it. Um, this is one where I think it's kind of a clear, more of a, you know, Different in the Mavericks Thunder. I think it's more of a clear division. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the odds on this one are minus 950 for the Celtics to win game two, uh, plus 625 for the Cavaliers to steal it. Yeah. I just, I'm going to lean into that. I just. So, no Donovan Mitchell, that guy? Look, I mean, Donovan Mitchell. Do you like him? Is he, you know, do you think he's able to look, do it by himself? Because he's basically by himself. I mean, yeah. He has Garland, but he's a 6'1 point guard. And I'm looking at the roster, like, I don't know much about the Cavs, but. And then Jared Allen didn't play last game because of illness, and he has a defensive stopper, so maybe that'll swing a little bit. But that's they still lost by like 30. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to be skeptical. Okay. I mean, optimistic. I'm sorry, optimistic. Op- yeah, I'm being skeptical. You're being skeptical. Yeah, <laughs> just straight up. I think the Celtics, I'm going to just lock it in up front. Celtics going to win game two. All right. Because I'm trying to build a little parlay action. Okay, this is the easy one. Like I said, I could go into details about how Jason Tatum had a horrible game last game, and everybody loved him over Jalen Brown. And usually in games like this, when it gets a little dirty, Jalen Brown shows up and Jason Tatum goes a little ghost. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at these names, and your boy didn't even play. Well, yep. What's his name? At? I don't see Chris Staff. Poor Zingas on here. Am I, am I tripping? You might be. I don't memorize rosters or anything like that. So I'm looking like at that. the stats. So I'm looking at the stats. I don't see any stats for Chris Dapp. So if he didn't play or I messed up something in the process of looking at these stats, uh, man, Celtics is going to win. The Celtics are going to win the series in like maybe five games. I'm yeah, sorry. I it's, believe you. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be that close. All right. If they don't win this year. They're going to they gonna blow that team up. Let's go. Where are we going next? Eastern Conference semifinals, game two, or not game two, game three, Pacers, Knicks. Yeah, let's go there. All right. What do you think happens here? You got Jalen Brunson being whatever. He paid he... for Dallas. Yeah. They let him go and chose to get Kyrie, and I always said, why? That's your homegrown product. Yeah. He had no problem being a second fiddle to Luka, and now who knows what y'all could have been. Because I'm sorry. He actually plays defense. Sorry, Kyrie, you don't play defense. No, he doesn't. You, I, I tried to do one of those, uh, like, player props things on Kyrie, yeah. and it was – you know, you always just assume Luca's going to hit his 30 points or whatever. So it was like Luca 30 with 10 assists. Mm-hmm. Then I hit like Kyrie 20 and then four assists. And yeah. he just, he hit four assists. I was like, that's Damn. a good day. Yeah. yeah that's like a good two day. rebounds. That's a good day. No like, steals or one steal because somebody deflected and he got it. Yeah. He's like, oh, hey, yeah, caught he, the ball. He can play defense. He doesn't choose he just, to. He chooses not to. So I just, so in that series with the Knicks and the Pacers, now, now it's, we can talk about the Knicks, but, man, and they just lost the second game, I want to say. So they're down 2-0. They lost 130-121 tonight. Uh, uh, Jalen Brunson's that guy, but they also have a guy on the other side, Tyrese Halliburton, who has a coming out party. Yeah, he put up 34 points tonight. You know, so he's tough. Well, and they, I mean, and they, they still lost. They're in New York or in Indiana? Uh, next game? Yeah, in Indiana, right? Uh, let's see. They will be going to the Pacers. Okay, yeah. so once again, the series doesn't start until someone loses a, a road game or someone wins a road game. So if they win these two games, who knows? But once again. That's true because if you have somebody like, you know, Halliburton play like that again, I know once again I'm just speculating. Yeah, but yeah. then you have Syacam come out and play his normal game. It's a, it's a good game with the Pacers and Knicks. You know, Brunson can't carry the team by himself completely, but it goes to show you that. You know, things can happen. Odds for that are a little similar to uh, Mavericks Thunder. That's mm-hmm. minus 218 plus 180. Pacers, actually, yeah, Pacers at home have the uh, minus 218 advantage. Mm-hmm. So be that what it is, I think, I think the Knicks are going to go in there and uh, upset. I think it's going to become a series because the Knicks are going to beat the Pacers at home. I think Halliburton's not going to be able to do that so does all the Pacers series. win a game? Does the Pacers even win a game? I think Pacers probably win game. One, four? Yeah, game four to try to at home one. to keep it a series alive. 
but just because the Knicks want to win it at home. You know, like they want to, they want the home crowd yeah, to feel the victory, yeah, not the, the slander on the years road. Since they felt a home victory in playoff game, I right? Figured. Here's the X factor, though. They have yet to put Tyrese Halliburton on Jalen Brunson, and he is a he's a defensive guy. Okay. Now, granted, they're probably trying to say don't do that because you got to score freaking forty points to give a chance to win. But what if that? What if he's long, man? He's like what six five. Yeah. And your boy Brunch is like, what, 6'2", 6'1"? Yeah, he's, I don't want to say short, but he's, but he's not, on the shorter end yeah. of the NBA spectrum. Yeah, yeah, short for NBA guys, not right. short for us. So, uh, I think Pacers win game three. So, I'm going to lean, I'm still leaning with my Knicks game three. The Knicks are leading points on the season, rebounds on the season, field goal percentage, three-point percentage. I'm in. I feel you. I'm in. And everything's saying Knicks, but something in the back of my head just says it's the freaking Knicks, man. They're going to figure out a way how to mess this up somehow. If not this round, definitely this next round. Oh, yeah. Are the Knicks going to the finals? They're not going to win. Are the Knicks going to the finals? I don't think so. Okay. All right. So the the Celtics are going to beat the Knicks? Oh, yeah. With with how good the Celtics have been, it wouldn't surprise me if they they redeem Tom Brady, not, you know, the, the... the blowout Patriots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They redeemed the town that Tom Brady <laughs> built with an NBA the final championship. Eli Manning twice. Yeah, I know. Wow. That yeah. That's your goat. It is. He is a good. He is a good goat. That's the. Um, and then one more game or one more series to go over here. I think your favorite one. Yes, sir. Western Conference semifinals game three. Nuggets versus the Timberwolves. As of today. The two Nuggets up. are down two to two, two to nothing. Two so we're talking Game Three, Western Conference Semifinals. What do you think? What happened in Game One and Two? Why are you know why are the Nuggets not? Anthony Edwards. We talk about He's just Luka. That dude. We talk about Luca. I think at the Anthony Edwards. <clears throat> listen to me right here when I say this, and I may be wrong. He's going to be the face of the NBA after LeBron James retires not because he's necessarily the most skilled player but because he wants to be the face he wants to be that guy this is a guy who didn't like basketball until he realized he can only go so far in football he plays football on the court he's that guy he made call anthony towns become like good again yeah it gave gave him the ability to be open because yeah. he's I mean, a threat i'm not number one but i'm a great number two yeah, so, game one they both put up twenty seven. Exactly. Carl Anthony Towns put the role. Yeah, Scotty Pippen to my Michael Jordan, not that extreme, but you know what I'm saying. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. That that's two zero lead. That's tough. It's very tough. Um, what do you think happens for game three? It's at Denver, right? It's in Denver. Mm-hmm. Was, it was not in Denver. No, it's at Timberwolves. Hold up. Hold up. Please tell me I'm mistaken. <clears throat> the T-Wolves won two games in Denver? Let me go back. We're going to view the series. Minnesota leads 2-0. and Game three is at Minnesota. So, yeah, it looks like they... Well, well we, we did say the series... Looks like they they won two away. It, we did say a series doesn't become a series if someone win a away game and uh, they won two. They're nothing but consistent. They scored 106 in both both games. Does Jokic get swept? And I'm going to premise this by saying, I'm not a... We talked about this before. I'm not a Jokic hater. I like Jokic. I think Jokic is one of the, the most skilled big men of all time, NBA history. Three-time MVP, right? Yeah. And I'm not a big LeBron fan, right? But if LeBron gets swept like this, boy, they have his, 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 his thing with burning the epigy, whatever you call that thing, they got the, the doll burning up, burning yeah. him up. They'll, they'll go crazy if LeBron down 0-2, losing two games at home. Oh, yeah, I'm all over Twitter if LeBron's oh, losing. What? I know you hate LeBron. I know. I'm I know. the first person know. just, you so know. So you see what I'm saying, though, right? Having people writhing in the comments <laughs> because they, they just, they think I'm, like, just hating to hate. You know, you hate for, hate for no reason. But if, if if he does go down 3-0 or gets swept, does the narrative change if people start talking negative about him? I think it shouldn't. I mean, it's going to change because that's that's all people do over the offseason is speculate. Yeah. 
but then he's going to come out and he's going to do his normal, you know, career thing where he puts up 25, 12, and 12. Right. 26 points a game, 10 rebounds, 12 rebounds, 10 assists. He's going to do almost a triple double every game for the season. Mm -hmm. So if he falters in the playoffs, whatever. He's selling tickets. I mean, they're not going to they're not going to get rid of him or hate on him. Yeah. He just might need a support cast because mm -hmm. it's hard to be a big man and win yeah. win a win a final. I feel you. You know, like he's a big defensive guy. He's scoring. He's not scoring. He can score threes, but he's but, scoring closer yeah, shots because he's range. getting rebounds. Yeah. And he's like, oh well, I can just but I can win. The X factor we're not going to take into consideration. Jamal Jamal Murray, the point guard, the clutch guy. Yeah. Who, who hasn't been clutch? Who has been clutch? We scored like what, three points, five points. Yeah, that's... the game. He threw a freaking pad on the court. Yeah, he's been all mad. No one's seen it. He got a hundred thousand dollar fine for that. But did they suspend him for the next game? Um, no, he got uh, avoided Lucky. suspension. Lucky, because he suspe Well, he well. actually. They, this thing says he tossed a heating pad and a towel. And the referees didn't see it. Mm -mm. Should have been a tech. Yeah, no doubt. They should have lost by more. So that that means they're in his head. Yeah, they 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 might get swept. They might get swept because without him. Jokic has no shot. I don't, I don't care how good you are. You can't beat a team like this by yourself. So odds are minus 185 for the Timberwolves at home. I think the Timberwolves win game three. Yeah. Go, go down, go up three to nothing. I, I can't even argue. I agree with that 100%. I would love to argue with you. But uh, Anthony, I mean, uh, Carl Anthony Towns and, and, and my boy, the new face of the NBA, they're about to stamp this down. I'm not going to say they win by 26 again, but I can see them winning by double digits. Okay. That's fair. Who do you see winning the NBA Finals? Timberwolves. The Timbs. All right. I'm sorry. This guy is just... Look at this picture I'm looking at, man. This guy is grimacing at the camera and making me scared right now as we speak. Yeah. He, 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 I could be wrong. It should be the Celtics. It should be the Celtics. Yeah, but Carl Anthony Towns in this series, he's averaging like 35 points a game. And he, that's against an MVP. Right. He is doing it. So, like I say... His and, issue was and Jochik. One thing to count, not to counter what you said, but to argue against, like, you know, Jochik isn't doing all the things. He is still doing his twenty four, twelve, and yeah. ten. Like, it's just he can't do forty, twenty five, and thirty to win this series. Might have to. Yeah, exactly. Because especially if your boy's not showing up, uh, it, he he's done it before. Yeah, this is one I think you just can't put on yeah, on Jochik alone. You, alone. Like it's more on Murray well, than people anything. Will. Some people will say it's on him because I mean he's the face. But that was LeBron James. Let's be honest. They'd be like, oh Lord. Yeah, last game he did sixteen points, sixteen rebounds, eight assists. I mean, I, I would can't argue get, the the he assists. Had two more assists. I would argue the the there are sixteen rebounds. It's like all right, he's they're already down. He can't be just putting up a layup. Yeah. He's got to pass it out, try to get the three. I feel you. I, I'm not trying to take too much credit for him. That's game two. You know, in game one, they did a little bit better. Not not much. It was 99 to 106 instead of 80 to 106. But all that really means is Jochik's just scored a little bit more. You know, like. How many points per game does the Denver Nuggets average? I'm pretty sure it's more than 80 something. Like, I'm pretty sure it's substantially more than 80 something, right? Yeah, so the absolutely. defense they're playing average points per game for the two teams combined are at two fifteen. So, you know they're right there with, you know, with that points uh, one thirteen for points four okay. for the it's Nuggets. A, it's a, they're not that eighty and eighty. Would you say eighty six, eighty? And Timberwolves average points for one oh six. And they got one oh six again. And the That's what I said. They, say something about consistency. So they're consistent, and their defense is something they can't deal with. I guess it's too physical. Maybe. So I, I don't know. Um, they need to figure it out because it's not going to look. It's not going to look good. You won a championship, and have they? How many NBA teams have won a championship and got swept the next year? I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's haven't happened before. It usually doesn't. Yeah, they normally put up some kind of fight. Some type but, of fight. But I will say, LeBron. He got swept. I don't know. You wouldn't know. I don't know oh, if he got man. swept, but I will say every time, not every time, but. He's been kicked out of the playoffs a lot of times. It's, yeah. it's the factor of being in, in yeah, the league for so long. Years, yeah. He's won, what, six? No. 
He won four championships. Four. Ha, ha, ha. He's four and six. He did it on purpose? Ha, ha, ha. He did it on purpose? Yeah, a little okay. bit. Uh, <laughs> he's won four, right? And he's been kicked out of the playoffs like 12, 13 times. A lot. There's a good chance he's been swept. He has been swept, but and has been swept there's a good chance he, There's a good chance he's been swept after a championship. But think about it. Last just seven, the last Lakers championship, maybe? Use the math teacher. Play the odds. I feel you. We'll look that up under the date, but it better not happen, Jokic. I'm sorry. It no, that would, be a, that would be a crime thing. Yeah, you're right. All right, so that'll wrap up the NBA, not draft, the NBA uh, playoffs talk. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Holla. <laughs> All right, after a quick little break, we are back to talk NFL draft. We're going to break, not break down, but we're going to just talk a little bit about what the picks did for the teams. Yeah. We're not going to go through the whole draft. That would be exhaustive yeah. and pointless because most of those guys aren't going to be playing in a couple years no, no. or ever. Yeah. Um, pretty much half the first round, 15, yeah, that's 15 good. 16 picks. That's good. Uh, let's start with my Saints. The number who one that? overall. Sorry, who that? Sorry, who that? Go ahead. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Start with the number one overall, Caleb Williams from USC, quarterback. Browns got the pick. What does that do for them? Obviously, they got rid of Justin Fields. Um, you know, is that the right move? You're a head football coach. Uh-huh. That's why I brought you in to talk about this. Okay. This is, I don't know enough to be like, oh, this is going to work out or whatever i know they just got justin fields Mm -hmm. and they're kind of like the browns now where they just recycling quarterbacks like going through people you know like my my kids as the old daddage would say like my kids change clothes we always got so much damn laundry Mm -hmm. uh but yeah what what void does caleb williams fill is it a good fit he's got some weapons now so things I don't see why things are going to be terrible for him. You know, he's got Keenan Allen, DJ Chark. He's got some people. He's got some people. They what draft, do you think? They drafted uh, Rome Odunze. So Rome Odunze, yeah. Odunze. He's, so, he's going to be a good addition. So I understand why they moved on because the whole adage, a quarterback on a rookie deal is like gold because you can have signed all type of people, right? Right. I'm just, I just wish they got these guys for Justin Fields. They do not have J.J. Chark. They have D.J. Moore. D.J. Moore, I'm which, sorry. Is, which is better than D.J. Chark. Yeah. Way better. Um, we'll take it. I just wish they gave him a chance to have all these weapons to see what he can do. Now he's going to be a backup in, in, in what, Pittsburgh, I want to say. He plays for the Steelers now. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I understand why they did it from an analytical and, and, and cap situation, being a team who sucks at cap, being the Saints who always under the, over the cap like a billion dollars. Right. Caleb Williams, is he that guy? I don't know, man. Uh, USC quarterback, so finicky. The last guy who was a generational talent was Trevor Lawrence, and has he really been a generational talent? He's been better than. I mean, he's definitely a Jags quarterback moving forward. Yeah, but there's is, no is that question saying there. Much? Like Mark Brunel is the all-time best quarterback, and, and he's also he's. I mean, granted, we haven't had a quarterback until uh, we just drafted Anthony Richardson, and then we yeah. he did the thing that Colts quarterbacks love luck. to do: get hurt. Go ahead, luck. He got he hurt. A, he was a generational quarterback, though. Right, but he got hurt. Every single season. That was your GM's fault. I, I'm not saying it wasn't, yeah. but if you, you even so, like if you can't stay healthy. Yeah, best ability, availability type thing. Yeah. I feel you. The backup ended up having to come in. He got more snaps than Andrew Luck ever did. So then at that point, yeah, they wasted the pick, just like they wasted Trent Richardson's pick. You know, like, I'm sorry if it didn't work out, yeah. but it didn't work yeah, out. You know, just like, like, Justin Fields. I'm sorry it didn't work out, but it, so they're just moving on. So they're moving on. So they, I understand. They traded this man for like a sixth round. Mm-hmm. And then they go. What, what makes it worse is someone off in the second and third round like a week before. Yeah. So So does he fill the void? I think They're comparing had, him to Aaron Rodgers. Yes, which I guess. Um, I guess everybody who makes these, what you call them, the – off balance and uh, off kilter throws, they compare to Aaron Rodgers. They compare Zach Wilson to Aaron Rodgers. Right. Uh, we saw how that worked out. Right. So, now I'm not saying Zach Williams and Caleb Williams and Kyle's was what and what, but let's look at what Caleb Williams did in college. Last year, he had Jordan Addison, who's a top, what, 15 pick? Is, is last year an anomaly because he played for like the first three quarters of the season and then he lost a game and then he was like, all right, I don't have a reason to play anymore? Because like he was good the previous year. I years, want my right? quarterback to want to win. I 
I do too, but I also don't want my quarterback to tear his ACL when I, he's got I feel fifteen million saying. on the line. I want my quarterback to want me to 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 want to to have a fit to the point where I got to take him. Like he, I'm not getting off the field, coach. I'm playing. I understand it's a business. I get it, a hundred percent. But that's what makes me worried about him. How much he loves this, because that position, you better love it. Because yeah. <laughs> You're going to be with him more than you with your family, with your wife, with everybody inv- you're involved with. So you better love it. How much does he love it? How much has he grown since he got to college? And I, I personally took Jaden Daniels over. Now, granted, I'm biased. Yeah. Of course. LSU. LSU. But Jaden Daniels has grown exponentially since he was at Arizona State. And that growth shows me he can continue to grow. It's like Josh Allen. He grew when he was at what, North Dakota State, wherever it was. Yeah. And then he got to the league and he started growing more. If a guy is capped out now, well, I guess with the Bills have I mean the Bills. With the Bears have around him, he still could be a good quarterback, but number one overall, you supposed to like two bowl in like five years. Okay. That's what it's supposed to be. I'd love I'd love to see what kind of like transition he's gonna have from college to the NFL. Like what is his rookie season gonna look like? Because mm-hmm. it's very hard for a any rookie to come yeah. in and have a monster season, especially a quarterback. quarterback yeah. Because, like, if you're the running back, it's like, all right, I just got to do one thing. I got to be good at my thing. I don't have to, like, manage the whole game. I don't have to learn. Be a team leader, all that stuff. Right. I don't have to be a locker room guy. And this, I can just be a running back. Or I can just be a tight end or a safety or whatever. This is, you know, that's kind of the thing. That's why the the quarterbacks are always paid the highest. That's why the, the draft picks, that's why they always get them. Yeah, I'm interested to see it. But you mentioned Jaden Daniels. Let's move to yes. number two. Yes. Um, the Commanders, this is interesting. Um, <laughs> Scary. They got a brand new coach. Brand new owner? Brand new owner. Okay. Um, so it's not the old Commanders. I hope you're it's right. It's not the bad. I hope you're right. Uh, you know, bad structure, if you want to say. Uh, offensive coordinary, coordinator, Cliff Kingsbury. Okay. Jaden Daniels, second overall pick. People are comparing, not people, Matt Miller specifically on ESPN is comparing him to Lamar Jackson. Very lazy. Running ability. Come on, man. Come throwing. On, man. Come on. I See, I disagree with this because I think his throwing ability is way, way better, better than Lamar. Than Lamar like. But he's also smaller than Lamar. Yes. Like, he's a thin dude. He's, yes. a, he's a small quarterback as far as, like, uh, frame. And whatnot. frame. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, he's tall. And he's yeah. only 210. It's like a buck 70 when he started college. 6'2, so 6'3, buck 70. So he gained about 40 pounds, though. 6'4. Yeah. Very tall. Good good for the NFL. That's yeah. what you want. I agree. I say very tall. Very tall from my perspective. That's 6'4 tall for me, too. I'd be like, damn, that dude's tall. <laughs> That's a nice little bit of height. Um, but yeah, Seattle didn't really have, you know, much in the quarterback department last year. So I think this is definitely an improvement for them. Yeah. It fills the, the void they needed, even if, like, you don't like them you know or like the 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 team he they drafted in the first round a couple years ago terry mclaurin did receive a scary terry yeah scary terry From ohio state i want to say yeah i think so yeah and jahan dotson i like he, him he's, he's with, a slot i like him so they got some some people he has a good long ball Jaden daniels he he ranked first in uh yards per completion in college football Deep ball man and it's because he wasn't doing like the six, you know, the six yard slant pass, the check down, whatever you call it. Uh, he was completing long passes more often than not. I think it was like 11 or 12 yards, yeah, which he was taking shots. He that's was pretty. Shots. He was taking shots. Uh, but they also said that like one of the, the downsides of him is he's sometimes too quick, you know, too quick to just run out of the pocket because he thinks it's it's ruined or too quick to just release the ball. So, yeah, I think that's something that they can do- definitely sculpt. Yeah. But can the commanders sculpt it is my question to you. Great question. Um, new ownership, I, I guess you could say a better coach, but it's Dan Quinn. I'm not saying he's not good. I hate the Falcons. I hate the Falcons. I hate the Falcons. So anything Falcon-related, I hate the Falcons. It sucks. It's fair. But 28-3 uh, to three Super Bowl. 28-3 to three Super Bowl, yes. Uh, don't let me forget. Remember. Don't let me forget. No Super Bowl victories. Anyways, uh, but I... I I want to have faith because I like Jaden Daniels. Uh, I have personal reasons why I like Jaden Daniels. It's a long story. Can't get into it. Outside of the bias. Or this adds, that adds to that the adds bias. That adds to the bias. All right, that's fair. Whatever. Uh, but if I take the bias away, 
He is quick to throw it, and he likes to show everybody how tough he is by now sliding, and he's slight of frame. So that guy's a little scary because the Redskins O-line, I'm sorry, the Commanders O-line, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, imagine somebody like Aaron. I know he retired, but like somebody like Aaron Donald Hit hitting him. a two, 210 pound. Some rap. Yeah. I'm Some sorry. Rap. You're I'm sorry. You're, you're concussed, not up. sir. You're not up. Yeah, uh, they broke down Anthony Richardson with some some shoulder and he's injuries. 245. And he's a big dude. Two, 6'4", 245. Yeah. So that has me worried. The old line's terrible. The skills position, they got the Robinson kid from Bama. They got uh, the receivers, like you said. Yep. But my question is, who are they going to stop? And he's going to be on that field for a long time. The defense is terrible. Passing the ball a lot. The old line's terrible. I hope he makes it this season. That's why I was worried about him going there. I hope make through the season. Like he's going to take some shots. Yeah, like Joe, maybe like Joe Burrow because yeah, their offensive line was yes. trash when he got drafted. Trans ACL, it comes back when the line's better and takes him somewhere. I will hope because I mean that would be like we don't hope that for anybody. No, no. But but I understand why it would happen. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, man. Like you got we got to stop this thing where even including Joe Burrow is not because the black and white quarterback is an athletic quarterback. Just because a guy's athletic doesn't mean the O line could be sorry. Yeah, he can't just run away Thank and you. get like, out every time. Imagine how great he'd be with a good old line. Yeah. But, All right. Know. I think I think he's going to have a good career. I don't think he's going to fade away into nothing. I think the next pick in the oh, draft you hate is, him, right? is going to fade away he into nothing. Like I do not guy. think Drake May is that dude. Why not? Um, <laughs> I'm just not a fan. They're comparing him to Justin Herbert, and if anything, the NFL's proven that Justin Herbert is somebody you can beat, at the very least. Definitely in the playoffs. Yeah, like... If he makes it. They say he extends plays, and, you know, he finds a way, but this is not college football. Like, we've seen... There's how many teams in college football? How many... How good, many teams, teams have bad schedules? And who had... What's the ACC? So, who he played, like... Florida State, Clemson, yeah. who's no longer good. Thank you. Like, so what What great defense has he seen? That's why I like Jaden Daniels because. And he's going to a completely scalped, in my opinion, Patriot squad. Who's the number one receiver? Exactly. They got that running back, Stevenson. Jacoby Brissett is their current starter. Okay. Okay. He's a good like – we, we, the Colts had him as a, a bridge, starter. Like a bridge guy. Right. We had him as a bridge guy yeah. between uh, Rivers and Richardson or before Rivers and two yeah. – yeah. till Rivers and two Richardson. I get you. Um, he's a good guy. I think given, like, enough time, Brissett could probably lead a team. Kind of like a Baker did, like, a resurgence. How many wins would he lead this team to if it's Jacoby Brissett? Oh, this one, not many. Like, for four? But we didn't have – Pittman and he did yeah. fine, yeah. but we had Taylor, so it was a, a good running game. Make make him worried, so they gave him time to run. I don't know about uh, Drake May. Th- this one's weird. They don't have a great team on offense. No. Bill Belichick had the team constructed, you know, based on value. It was a lot of utilizing veterans that had some gas left in the tank. Mm-hmm. You know, utilizing people at strong positions. That's why he's such a great coach. Yeah. Now it seems as though the Patriots are not coachless, but they're spiritless. Like there's nothing that's saying like, oh, that's who the Patriots are. That's the kind of thing that they do, and they do it well. Like they're still looking for who they are as a new team without their 20-year dynasty. Because as soon as Tom left and then Bill, not outed by any stance, but as soon as Bill just didn't have the weapons Mm – like, you can build a team around Patrick Mahomes. Give him people, he'll do yeah. it. Tom Brady's the same way. You you didn't give Bill enough time after Tom... To get weapons. To, to go help. build the whole thing again. Yeah. So, well, I, now, I just think that your fizzle out from Drake May is going to be partially due to him being in a bad situation for himself. Mm-hmm. But it's also partially due to dr- the Patriots having no direction. Or at least, in my opinion, no clear direction. Who's the like, in coach? a fantasy perspective, I got, like, dynasty drafts coming up. Yeah. I tanked last year. I hold, like, multiple first-round picks. Drake May's nowhere on my radar. And it's nothing against him. It's, the, it's more against the Patriots. Because I didn't realize he really doesn't like this guy. We don't like him. It's more about the Patriots than it is about him because it's just – it's almost like they should draft a bunch of defense and offensive people and just let Brissett do yeah. while they can – 
while they're bad. But here's the thing. You, re- you replace Belichick with a new coach who played for Belichick. And I think the, the owner, um, Kraft, I think it is, he wants to prove that he can win without Belichick. Yeah, they so, do want that. So, but like you said, I don't dislike the guy as much as you. I just don't know the guy. Um, I don't necessarily dislike him. Well, you don't just. You don't I just like, dislike his situation. His situation. So if he went with, if he went to like the Cowboys, who is ready made team, was need a quarterback, he'd be. You like him then? Yeah, quote unquote, need a quarterback. I'm just saying, I don't think that's okay. near their only problem. Just say Patrick Mahomes goes down, you get him to play quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's, that's, that's a great Ram program. Great Ram team, Andy Reid. Is he that guy then? Or you think he's still Probably not? not. I think, but I also I think that the Chiefs are that anomaly team that they run such a weird... They, it's a good program, but it's such a two Patrick Mahomes but, strengths. Well, well, I hate to disagree. Your boy did the same thing with Aunt, um, uh, McNabb. He wore the Eagles. Oh, now, Reed? Mc, McNabb just wasn't as good as Mahomes. He choked in Super Bowls and NFC Championships, but think about the Eagles team he built, that machine. Yeah. That just keep on churning because the system is a little quirky. It's yeah. innovative. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not saying that Drake May would go to Kansas City and be that guy, but I think with a, with a structure like that, with a coach like that, I think he wouldn't be as bad as we think he will be with the freaking Patriots. They, they, bro, you don't draft a quarterback when you got your team. Unless you plan on sitting his butt the whole year. Now, what if they sit him the whole year? Well, then they then Jacoby Brissett can just throw it to Kendrick Bourne and K.J. Osborne. That's the receivers? Yeah. That's I, in the morning, too? Yeah. Oh, my God. Just deep threats. They're like three and fours on other teams. Well, they're they're good deep threats, but they, if that's all you got, they don't have, like, they don't have a whole team. That's my argument. They just don't have a whole team around it. So why draft a quarterback right now? I don't agree with it. All right, let's move on because okay, we've been right. harping on about this yeah, dude. Your boy. Hating your on boy. him for no reason for way too long. <laughs> your boy. All right, number four overall. My favorite pick of the draft. The son of one of my favorite players ever. Why? Because he's a Colt. Because he's a Colt. <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. I prayed that we would find a way Why to trade up to trade get up him. To get this guy. A legacy guy. We, got, we do. We have God. Reggie Wayne as our one of our coaches. Like, you got to get this guy. Yes, I think so too. Good but God. also, I believe that the Cardinals weren't. No. They're like, nah, we got We're Marvin the Harrison Jr. At number four. And, like, if somebody would have picked him before, th- like, they'd be stupid. Because argue that Drake or that Drake May should have – or that uh, Marvin Harrison should have gone to the Patriots. Who's going to throw the ball to Kobe Brissett? Right, no. Yeah, I feel you. So it would be dumb for the, any of the other teams to pick him. So I don't think the Cardinals would have come off this pick regardless. I agree. They were probably asked, and it would have cost somebody dearly. I heard somebody gave him a hell of a uh, haul. They was like, nah. And this dude's not even. This dude's smart. He's not even signing his uh, licensing agreement for the jersey. He's tra- he's waiting for that Caitlin Clark hype to die down, the, the demand to rise on his name, mm. and then when he signs it, he's, things are just gonna sell out. Smart guy. What Dad do you think the about business. the Cardinals? The fit. The Cardinals have given up on Josh Rosen after a year. <laughs> Went ahead and took. The Kyler. menacing t- toddler, Kyler, Kyler Murray. Yeah, the, the, the toddler. That's but right. they went and tanked to rebound and get a gigantic, yeah. once again, in my perspective, gigantic, 6'3", 210 pounds. Marvin Harrison Jr., who is fast. Yeah, he's, he's a got bigger hands, version of his dad. And I think he could be better. Yeah, because he's 6'3". His dad was like, what, 5'10", 5'11"? And, yeah, 5'11". Five, yeah, 5'10", 5'11". 5'11". Quick they, guy, fast guy. Bro. Matt Miller is do has a uh, criminal. Is a criminal. Like, please stop Matt Miller with these sorry ass comparisons. Come on, AJ Green. Yeah, Matt Miller, you need to chill with the AJ Green is that here. The, is that the floor comparison? I don't know because they're giving uh, Drake May the comparison of Justin Herbert and Caleb Williams the Aaron Rodgers. So I think so they're right, giving them that's ceilings. The ceiling. So. I mean, A.J. Green's consistent for a long time, but he he, I think this guy's going to be... He wasn't the best receiver in his own draft. Julio, Julio, Jones, Julio Jones? Yeah. Yeah, Julio Jones was. Easily the best receiver in this draft. Yes, not even close. Even though some people argue that, you know, my alum, come on Spartan, go Spartans, uh, Malik Neighbors uh, was right there, 1-8. 
Yeah. Because he's a yak guy. I mean, he was drafted as a second wide receiver, which yeah. is pretty crazy. This is a guy. We'll get that later. We'll get that later. We'll get that later. So, coupling that up, you know, the um, you got Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyler Murray. He's the obvious number one wide receiver one. Um, what do you think that means for the team? You know, does it help them enough to like put put the team together this year? They've been crafty on the ground. They've got you know a decent. Kyler Murray's is not the biggest quarterback on the planet. And he hasn't been like hurt his whole career. You know, yeah. they got a decent line. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen this season with them? It's one or two things going to happen. Um, either he legitimizes Kyler Murray as a quarterback because he has a legit number one receiver. Because I don't think this guy can know it possibly be a bust. I think bare minimum he's AJ Green, which is a, a five, six, seven, eight time Pro Bowler. So he legitimizes Kyler Murray as an actual quarterback because he got weapons. Better than Larry Fitzgerald. Or the new Larry Fitzgerald. The new Larry Fitzgerald. Because okay. Larry, Larry. He's bigger than Larry. Larry now, Larry's about 220, man. Is he? Larry was a big ass dude. Was he, was he 220 coming in as a rookie? About 215. Okay. Larry, five just pounds wasn't, off. Larry was nowhere near as fast as him, though. But I think Larry. Larry just never dropped a ball. Never. And his routes. I don't know. Harrison routes are crispy. So I think, I think a I'm faster, excited to see it. I am, too. So, but, but the flip side is if he, if, if, if Kyler Murray doesn't do well with this team and they win like four games, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. They're gonna draft the quarterback next year. If you can't win, if you can't be a quarterback with this type of receiver, right? But if they draw, if if they don't lean on, if they don't just let Kyler Murray do, like and play and like keep him, name a quarterback from the next draft class, right now. I can't. Right. I can't. They because all of them went. So there's no quarterbacks coming next year. What about you after that? Is it worth wasting half the dude's rookie I contract? I agree. Half the number one receiver. But they're paying Not Kyle ever, Murray but the number one receiver sh- in this draft. A crap load of money right now. That's why you have to keep him. Because you got a weapon, a cheap weapon he right now. Win. He may Tell not. Me, brother, he, he did win. good his first two seasons. I like Kyler Murray when he plays his game. When he plays his game. But Quick, they need to let him. Just like stuff. they needed to let Justin Fields play exactly, his game. Exactly, exactly. Let him play his game. All right, let's move on. Offensive tackle, fifth overall pick, Joe Alt from Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, fought his way up, up the draft. Grown fifth man. overall is high. Grown man, 6'9", 321. Good guy. Yeah. So grown man. They said he's long and quick. Athletic. That's good. You always want to see an athletic. You know his dad played in the 320 league, right? guy. His dad played in the league for like 10 years. I What's his say- dad's name? I think it's John for, Alt. I think it's something like that. To be honest. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but I think it is John Alt. I think he played for like the might have been the coach of the tight. Oh, I'm right. It's John. It's John Alt. Alt. What team? Uh, dang, I don't remember. See, yeah, John Alt. Joe Alt, John Alt, family of the NFL. You don't, you get a lot more of that nowadays. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, he was when. Let's see. Went to the University of Iowa. He played for the Chiefs. Okay, so I knew it was a good team. 21st so, overall pick. Yeah, so. so he was good. So he knows the game. I wanted the Saints to trade up and get this Little guy. Joe said, take that, Dad. Take that, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wish the Saints would trade up and got this guy. Offensive tackle, if you're talking about, like, Justin Herbert not ever performing, mm-hmm. this helps. Yeah. At least, does. like, on paper. We know we're going to run the ball with, with your boy Harbaugh now because look at that big-ass dude. Yeah. We're no going to run the ball. We're going to help your boy. And they went, like, they, they gave away everybody yeah. in the wide receiver room. They got rid of Keenan Allen. And they kept, yeah, they gave away everybody. Did they draft anybody? Uh, not not early. Who are he throwing to? So they bought uh, Josh who's, Palmer. Who's the running back? Because your boy's gone. Eckler Austin played, Eckler went, Guess too. who he played for? Who? The Commanders. Yeah. That's another weapon for your boy, Jaden Daniels. Like, um, yeah, he, he was catching, like, 20, exactly. 20 passes That's a game. That's an easy little dump down. Yeah, look, give give Jaden Daniels a little dump. Oh man, he go. He but the dump, nice. the problem is the dump for Jaden Daniels is a thirteen yard out route. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come back, man. You're too deep. You're, too, you're not deep enough. Go out further. Go out further. Yeah, did you like shake your feet a little bit so they don't think you you doing a button hook? Yeah. No, Joe Alt's going to be a good addition for Justin Herbert. Good addition for the weapons. Um, Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnson, I think, is one, another one one of the wide receivers there. He was first last year, right? Yeah, he was. Okay. Uh, Josh Palmer's good. He just signed like a three year extension. So that's two. He has the uh, opportunity to get. Um, I think DJ Chark is actually with the Chargers. You still on that? I'm telling you, because I looked at it earlier, and 
that's pretty much what I saw. Okay. Was DJ Chark being somewhere. But that doesn't matter. It is it is on the charges. DJ Chark. Boom. Okay, so that's your three. That's uh, your Quentin three. Johnson, Brendan Rice. They got Brendan Rice. Jerry Rice's Okay, like big, I, I like the kid. name, but you got his big kid. What round did you have like seven uh, round? Lad McConkey. McConkey. Hold up now. Let's talk about Lad. That's the second round pick. Uh, number something. Yeah, he, yeah. I, I like him. He's a nice little slot receiver. He's tough, um, and he's not the traditional slot that's like just shifty but not fast. He's like a four three, or four four, or four three five, something like that. Something quick, quick, fast like that. And uh, I like him. Sure hands. So basically, what your boy is about second, to do is second overall, second round. Okay, so that's that's basically almost the first round pick. Uh, but it's not. Yeah, I know. Uh, no guaranteed fifth year contract. But uh, your boy is going to run the ball and then play action out the slot. Quentin Johnson, is his name Quentin Johnson, is going to be yeah. a deep threat. And Palmer is the everything guy. Yeah, but if you can use Brennan Rice as a good blocking back or a good blocking tight end. He's terrible. Shape him. If he wasn't, Jerry, him if he wasn't Jerry Rice's son, would we still be talking about him right now? No, probably okay, not. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's admit to it. He wouldn't, probably wouldn't have gotten drafted. At all. It's like Barry Sanders' son. Yeah, fair. Um, all right, Joe Alt's going to be successful. He's yes. going to help that run first offense in the Chargers. Let's go to the LSU mal- alum, the Como High alum. Go Como! Malik Neighbors, Spartans. six foot, two hundred pounds, sixth overall pick. He was a good, a good accent to Jaden Daniels' uh, onslaught. It's it's good to see him. He'll be with the Giants. The Giants still have Daniel Jones, but they finally got him a good weapon. Okay. So it's time for Daniel Jones to prove. Yes. It's nut up or shut up time. <laughs> it's time. It's because, time. I mean, when you have Darius Slayton and, you know, you're all, you've been dealing with the OBJ controversy, like, you know, yeah. like you come in dealing with just problems. Yeah. You can't really do anything. You look at the stats of Daniel Jones, he has not done absolutely, like, he's not done terribly. Like, What's his biggest He's middling, yeah. for sure, but he hasn't had weapons. Got a fat contract. You get a fat contract, you got more than middling. You're right. I mean, Jalen Hyatt and Juan Dale Robinson are the wide receivers that Malik Neighbors is automatically going to yeah, step in front one. of. Number one, yeah. Um, but he's a second overall wide receiver. That's true. It's great for us. Just two picks later. I mean... He's a good route runner. Matt Miller's crazy, saying he's Jalen Waddle. Somebody please fire Matt Miller. Jalen Waddle is a buck eighty, fast as I don't know what guy at Bama. He was a deep threat. This guy is a yak guy. His routes are good, but he has room to improve. Malik Neighbors, he's a. I'm gonna catch that ball. Come tackle me, because he has speed. He's tough to tackle. He runs like a running back once he gets the ball in his hands. So, so, a lot of times we see uh, rookie wide receivers that are projected to be, like, the only option. Mm-hmm. We see those guys perform really well just because they getting fed. They have to. Yeah. Um, so, I'm excited to see Malik Neighbors play. I think it's going to be a good season for him. And it's going to it's gonna be, his, like, it's gonna be that, that kind of career where it's going to be forced. He's going to be forced to be good early. What's a good season for him? 1,000 yards. So, do you think that's possible? Well, dude, we're doing, like, 17 games now. Touche. You're right. It's easy. To, and I'm not You're saying right. easy, but it's, it's way easier, easier to pull 1,000 yeah. yards out your ass. It's like, what, 60 yards a game? Yeah. You take, yeah. 60, 70 yards. No injuries. Just play clean. Yeah, he's been be- healthy throughout his career in, in, uh, in, at LSU. Once again, I'm biased because he uh, graduated from the school I, I graduated from, Go Spartans. Um, I graduated there, too. I know. I, I wanted to say that, too. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's move on to the surefire Alabama, as always, getting first-round draft picks. Offensive tackle, J.C. Latham, 6'6", 342, seventh overall, big boy. Who's he going to help? How's he going to help the Titans? Who's the new coach for the Titans now? Because your boy got fired. So That's true. He if did it, get if fired. It was very, Brian Callahan. Oh, my God. So he's going to run the ball a lot. He's an O-line coach. Remember for the Raiders that played? Yeah. They got beat the, beat the hell down uh, in that Super Bowl. So, yeah, he's going to run. He better run the ball because his pass blocking is a little suspect. So they are going to need him to play left tackle, Ooh. is what I'm reading, and he's never played a snap at left tackle. Why would you do that? Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens we'll with that. that. I don't know how he's going to help the Titans much, but he's 
definitely going to be utilized. The Titans think that Will Levis is that guy. They've given him receivers. They they signed uh, Ridley to that fat contract away from the who really played for it yet. Before uh, the, 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 I forgot who he played for. Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Yeah, the Jacksonville. I was, Jacksonville. I was thinking Atlanta, yeah. but it was before that. Yeah. Uh, and so they got him. They got your boy Hopkins still. They got that tight end. Oh, yeah, I forget you got old exactly. Hopkins. Exactly. They got that tight end. Uh, I forget his name. Something else. I forget his name. Yeah, it's a long name I can't pronounce. Did you just, uh, like... I, I did say... Oka, tuka, tuka. I didn't okay. click and clock. I thought you clicked. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to click. Uh, Fair. But... <laughs> but no, I, I definitely get what you're yeah, saying. They yeah. got him to do a bunch of weapons, and they didn't. They're they're, but at least, at least they're hedging everything on the dude. They're not like giving him no chances. Not like and the, then, like the Bears, right? Okay. They're they're building something to give the guy a chance, and yeah. if it implodes, yeah. Well, they're gonna restart anyway. Yeah, that's true. They're that's gonna true. fuck it up, maybe. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Another quarterback selected, number eight overall, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Penis <laughs> Junior. Penix Junior. Uh, oh to the Falcons, came out of Washington. I love the Falcons. They're so terrible. Left-handed quarterback, and yes. they just went lazy as hell with the, the Who, comparison here. I'm a left-handed quarterback. Tua. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, Tua, yeah. actually, I did not think was going to pan out. Yeah, but he He's has a doing way right. stronger arm than Tua. This dude throwing piss rockets, and Tua had a little pop gun. Yeah. Matt Miller, I'm sorry if you hear this, you're fired. <laughs> you wish. I know. Um, right? <laughs> yeah, he's got arm strength. Led the nation in passing yards. Uh, he can read a defense better than me on Madden. Well, better than you on Madden. I like the guy. He's don't like good. The pick. Actually, I love the pick because it's stupid in the and Falcons of my division. And he's healthy. Now. Well, the past two seasons, yeah, he hadn't missed a game. Which is, like, that's what you want. But why pay a guy $180 million and then draft the quarterback number eight? Yeah, so he'll be coming in uh, behind Kirk Cousins. Old man Kirk. Richest quarterback Consistent. in the history of the NFL. Yeah, just sign. All he does is sign fully sign guaranteed contracts. contracts. I want him to be my lawyer. Um, got a hundred million off a torn ACL. Good guy. One eighty, bro. Hundred guaranteed. Let's do it. Good guy. Yeah, Penix is gonna waste a few years there. So, but how many years they sit him? Well, Cousins is always good enough to play. Cousins is never like I can I cannot remember a performance. Top ten, top 10 quarterback. Consistently top fifteen. Yeah, I give you top fifteen. Every season, his stats are right there with, like, he's, he's – some of his stats every season are in the top ten. Torn Achilles. Falcons O-line is not that good. I don't know. I watched him on Hard Knocks last season. Uh-huh. I think that's – yeah, he was on Hard Knocks. Yeah, he's a good guy. I, Dude, I, it made me love him. Yeah, I love him and as his, a person. His wife, his family, all those kids, everything. It was like, damn, and I, actually, I want this dude to succeed. I actually love he's a Falcons quarterback. I know he's not going to Super Bowl with no Kirk Curzels. That's funny. I'm, I hate the freaking Falcons. But man. we're not y'all aren't going to Super Bowl anytime soon either. No, I feel you. But as long as they don't win, I'm yeah, that's good. all you want. Like all right. the Buccaneers can win, the Panthers, man. F the Falcons. I hate the freaking Falcons. Fair. All right. Another wide receiver came off the board on the ninth overall pick. It was Romo Dunze. Going to be a complimentary, I think, immediate number one. To uh, well, no, you got Keenan Allen. Yeah, Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. Yeah, he's probably going to be a, a slot. Yeah, a slot. They're going to work him in. He's not going to have a good season because he's not getting a lot of targets. No, you're right. But he's going to be a well-needed addition. In that locker room now, you have Caleb Williams. Yes. you got Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Romo Dunze. You've got the, the tight ends, Gerald Everett, Cole Komet. Cole Komet, yeah. um, like he him. is a sneaky top like five him. tight end. I like him. He's huge. I think he was two freaking 70. Yep. 6'6". Six, six. Uh, very good complimentary. They're comparing him to Jamar Chase, and I think if Caleb Williams pans out, the ceiling would be somebody like Jamar Chase. Yeah, I can see that. But I think he's because of the other people around. Keenan Allen's got a couple years left easily. DJ Moore's got years left. He's going to be, if the team's good, he's going to be struggling from food. Yeah. You know, just because everybody's going to be getting targets. Yeah, not no chance to eat. Yeah, and I, I don't think this is going to be a run first team by any standpoint. No. Unless Caleb you're Williams not, is the one doing the run. You're, you're not signing those guys and drafting that quarterback to run the ball. And, right. you're, and your running back is freaking Swift, who's a receiver out the backfield. Exactly. So, yeah, you're going to pass the ball. Uh, some people thought that he was – they thought him, neighbors, and Harrison was like 1A, 1B, 1C. I don't think that. I think that he's the third best receiver in the top three. I get it. Uh, I agree with the grade. I think he can be that number one receiver in the offense. Um, but it's a blessing and a curse that he's going to the Bears because you get to learn from a freaking pro, Keenan yeah. Allen. 
and he's the best route runner in the NFL, hands down. So yeah. you get to learn how to run routes with a pro. Uh, DJ Moore is going to teach you some things as far as being the speed. So he's going to learn and grow now by year two. Through year three, he's going to be that guy. He's going to have to because Kenny Allen's like my age. He's like 41. Yeah, he's, he's 33, but he's going to have to retire. He's going to have to retire. Uh, J.J. McCarthy went 10th overall to the Vikings. I think this is a perfect selection for them because he is able to just walk into a system Kirk that Cousins. worked for Kirk Cousins. He's Kirk Cousins. So if you are just Kirk Cousins, you're going to have a positive season, a positive career. You're going to make a bunch of money. Yeah. And you benefit right now from having Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, best TJ receiver, Hawkinson. Best receiver in the NFL? Huh? Best receiver in the NFL? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Think so? Okay. Yeah. Put I'm him on arguing. any team. Yeah, I'm not arguing. Any, any scheme. Him or Jamar Chase? Him and Jamar Chase. No, who, who? Him or Jamar Chase? Him. Damn. We've okay. seen Jamar Chase not catch, get uh, yeah, get yeah. games with 14, 15 targets and ha- and get catch five balls. Yeah, that's true. Just that's And I'm not saying it's 100% his fault, but we haven't seen those yeah. games. And your boy has a better quarterback, too. Yeah. Yeah. Granted, he's, you know, they've been playing down a lot in his career. It's it's a different situation. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I just think Je- Jeff Jefferson is a better quarterback. So does he J.J. Make- McCarthy's only lost one game in his career. <sighs> okay. He's going to lose a bunch, bunch next season. Home. Like what's Probably seven? Seven, eight. Yeah, I agree. Now my thing is, we say he's Kurt Cousins, but he can run more than Kurt yeah, Cousins. Yeah, he's not slow. He's not slow. He can he scramble. He has uh, good ACLs. He's ath- athletic. He's very athletic. Yeah. Um, and they say his potential has been tapped because you know Harbaugh running the ball forty times a game. Right. So I mean, he's stacked up to win. He has great receiving core. The O line's pretty good. Yep. Defense sucks. Defense is terrible. But I'd like that defensive core, and then I think he can get the most. I don't know what they have, but then they traded your boy Daniel Hunter to the Texans, they, I want to say. Yeah, but they also – the Vikings also drafted an edge rusher. Who, Dallas Thomas, I think? Um, Yeah, Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner. But he's not Daniel Hunter. That's he true. may be good eventually. He may be good this year, but I know for a fact Daniel getting me – Hunter's getting me 12 sacks. He's definitely – but you can gar- you can almost guarantee that Dallas Turner is getting – going to get reps because they're need- going yeah, they, to they need, need him to get reps. They need so. him. They, need, they got nobody else. They got freaking Davenport, the Saints reject, as in the other you – know. Hey, yo. Thanks, All right, let's go to number 11. Offensive tackle, Olu oh, Fashanu from Penn State. Another big boy, 6'6", mm-hmm. 6, 3 to 12 pounds. That's for the Jets. They desperately need somebody to protect the national treasure that is Aaron Rodgers. It's not overkill, though. They just signed two tackles. It's... I don't care. They need somebody yeah. to not have Aaron Rodgers go and do experimental smoking surgery to get a, <laughs> a body and get a new ACL to be, like, repaired in three days so he can start. But are they, are they going to slide him inside of the guard? I don't know. Because you don't draft somebody with number 11 overall when you know your quarterback needs another receiver or another weapon unless you, this guy's going to touch the field. But they're banking, they're banking on Aaron Rodgers doing like he's been able to do his entire career, produce off of nothing, That's off of no one. That's a young Rodgers. This is Rodgers off of Achilles tear, right? Yeah, thinking – yeah, but they're also – when they went and got Rodgers, they went and got all the all the wide receivers he wanted. I feel you, one hundred percent. He just never, he literally never got to play with him. He took four snaps. You know what receivers he got? Old Randall Alan Cobb. Lazard and old ass Randall. Come on, man. Like I so, like Randall Cobb. He, I, I cut my teeth on Randall Cobb whenever I was getting LSU into football. What's that guy that played with uh, Malik Neighbors, the, the, the deep threat? Brian Thomas, what his name is? Why not draft him? We came by way of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah, I know. I'm biased and shit. When she did. Up. She did not do it. She did not do herself some service. Miss Thomas did not do herself any service with with talking on the microphone, unfortunately. All right, let's jump forward to number twelve. We only got a few more. Bo Nix, quarterback from Oregon, about to be the quarterback for the Broncos. Sean Payton's so arrogant. They're comparing this dude to Dak Prescott. Or stop that. So Sean Payton sees that this guy has set the single record, percentage completion record, whatever, and he instantly thinks, I can turn him to Drew Brees. That's funny. He's not freaking Drew Brees. Yeah, but it's, is he better than Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson? Of course. I, I'm better than Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson. Sign you up. Like, that's better, like, How much on, is man. the league minimum? You willing yeah, to play I'll for 400 no right endorsements? Oh, boy, I promise you right now. Y'all can hit me. I don't care. Well, you can tattoo me and put my ass in a damn casket. Damn, not a casket because I don't want to be to spend it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Why? This, yeah. this man just said, kill me. Don't kill me. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's going to be better than Zach Wilson, better than Jared Stidham. He's obviously going to at least get the opportunity to lead the Broncos. They have a uh, decent 
couple decent people on the offense. You got some Marvin Mims. Uh, they traded away Je- uh, Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy. Yeah. They got Sutton still? Courtland, I believe they still have Courtland okay. Sutton. Okay. I mean, it's it's not the most attractive pick in the world, no. but it gives Sean Payton the opportunity to prove that he's the best coach because that's what a bunch of Saints people like to say, that Sean Payton's the best coach, and I disagree wholeheartedly. I, not the best all time? No, like just a great coach. I think he's a good coach. I think he's a fraud. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me explain. Fraud. I think Sean Payton saw greatness in Drew Brees. Based just upon rode that lightning. And rode that lightning as long as he could. Now, I have a Hall of Fame quarterback. They got people who got great quarterbacks who don't win with them. Right? That's true. Uh, we won one, and we stayed competitive with a shitty ass defense for like twenty years. So, I'm I'm, I'm biased towards Sean Payton, right? His coaching book, all that. Like I'm I'm I'm, but he's an arrogant son of a gun, and he really thinks because this guy completed seventy-seven point four percent of his passes last year, that's Drew Brees. Now, it's freaking Bowden. I can't get past Auburn Bo Nix. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He was ass, man, and they yeah. always say he was good, and he was ass. So he goes to Oregon, plays lesser talent, and now he's that dude? Yeah. Sorry. He he might have just pulled some wool just to get a check. Go get your bag, though. I don't care. Kirk Cousins Jr., baby. Make that money. What about the 13th, Brock Bowers? He went to the Raiders, which just doesn't really make any sense. They just drafted with, tight end last year, didn't they? With what they need. Yeah, they did. Um, Freaking Raiders. I don't know. They just don't make smart decisions no. in my mind. Excuse me, in George my mind. George Kittle? George Kittle blocks his ass off. This past year, he did. He took. Oh, excuse me. He does, took. Does, uh, does Brock Bowers block like that. Brock was a uh, receiving guy the past so three seasons. About, man. Matt Miller, listen, hit me up. We gotta talk, brother. We gotta talk, man. Like you mean that you getting that chatter and you just getting lazy on us, Matt Miller. Uh, but I mean, I, I like Brock Bowers because he's uh, one of those. I'm not gonna say Travis Kelsey because that's lazy too. But he's an athletic move tight end. Uh, you're not going to really have him in line to block. He's going to be a slot outside, going against the safety, going against the corner, going against a linebacker. I just know who the hell is throwing the ball. Who Did the Raiders draft the quarterback? I'm pretty sure they didn't. Um, not they, not they, at the beginning of the draft, at they least. They got the kid, uh, Aiden O'Donnell and Gardner Minshew as the quarterbacks. Now, I like Gardner Minshew. He's a, good hype, he's a good hype guy. I like him as a backup who can get in and play three, four games a whole season. Yeah. Like, y'all did that with the coach, and because he came in and y'all had a good supporting cast, y'all were like, what, 10 games? Yeah. Like, but I. 10 games. That roster was pretty decent. This roster sucks. That's true. The only thing you got is Devontae Adams. Yeah. He's, he's probably pissed I'm to have sure gone there. I'm pretty sure he's mad because he went there. And, he's like, know, God damn. Shit. They traded everybody as soon as I came as soon in. Look out here, the guy with and my he boy. was the number one wide receiver in the NFL, yeah. hands down. Yeah, I like him a lot. I think he's still the more on hands down. All right, let's talk about it. Your favorite pick of the draft. Dalise! Sorry. That's how you say it? Sure. Okay. Dalise! (laughs) Offensive tackle for the Saints, 14th overall. Obviously, Quest's favorite team. Who that? As mentioned before, who that? Yes. All right, what you think about Fuaga? A great pick, not a sexy pick. Ryan Ramchek, knee injury. We don't know what's going on. It's a chronic knee injury. It's the same knee injury that made him uh, fall in the draft to us in the first place, like 32 overall. Dang. Uh, and it's starting to catch up to him. Our left tackle, the dude, the Trevor Penning guy, that which I, I never understood why we would draft a guy from a D2 school, top 15 overall. Right. Has a panned out. Um, this guy can play left or right tackle, or worst case scenario, guard. He, he, he played in the zone blocking scheme, uh, and that's what we're switching to. New offensive coordinator. Now, I know this is a copycat league, and this guy coached under Shanahan, but if he just half as good as Shanahan, we're better than last year because Pete Carmichael last year was ass. What do you think? Do you think Derek Carr is going to rebound well? You ready for this? You paid a bunch of money. You ready for this? The Saints draft the quarterback in the fifth round, Spencer Rattler. You think Rattler's the guy? I hope. I, I just got a feeling. Okay. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> Sure. Because I'm, I'm just not sold on Derek Carr. I'm not saying he's bad, but he's but not. But is he worth the money? No. Okay. We pay that type of money, we at least got to make a playoff game. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and a lot of times. You gave him a lot of money for. Now, in his defense, Pete Carmichael was ass last year. Yeah, you did say that. Good God. I remember. We didn't, we didn't run screen play, We didn't run screen passes. We, we were predictable as shit. We tried to treat Kamara like he was Derek Henry. Remember, between tackles all game long. Yeah, that's like, true. Come on. All right, let's wrap it up with the last pick, or the last pick we're going to cover. Yeah, well, 15th overall, Latu, Latu, 
from UCLA, mm-hmm. an edge rusher, Is went that to what the his Colts. Latu Latu. Yeah. Layatu. Oh, Layatu. Okay, Layatu Latu. Latu, edge rusher That's from your UCLA. Team, right? That's your team, right? Shout out Colts. Mm-hmm. We actually have a decent team. We got a good offense. The O line is nice. I like the O line. We we learned after uh well after killing, we didn't learn after, while we were in the process of killing, killing Andrew, Andrew Luck. Luck yeah. We were developing an O line mm-hmm. because we didn't develop it before we got, got him. Andrew Luck, yeah. Right, because Peyton was just stonewall in the pocket. I got the ball. I got the ball. I got the ball out. Right. Drew Brees, same thing. Got the ball. I got the ball out. Right. Andrew Luck needed a couple minutes. Yeah. Literally. Literally. Couple minutes to decide where he wanted the touchdown to go. But he went to, to Stanford. No, he was good. That's the thing. Is like yeah. when he when he was given the time he wanted, he produced or he got held, he throated. Held that ball, cause good God. Uh, but yeah, I think this is good because our offense is solid. It uh, it adds another little bit of depth to our defense. What ends y'all have right now? That's decent. The dude P- Petty from Michigan, mm-hmm. and who else? Uh, Latu probably playing okay. the other side. So there you go. If it's a need, <laughs> yeah, um, if it's a need. You know, people were saying Turner might be better than Latu. I don't think it really matters because everybody's different systems are going to pan out for different people different Turner's ways. Turner's a better athlete. Latu's a better football player. I need I need the guys that are going to fit the system yeah, better than y'all. the guy who just is cute on a draft scorecard. He, he, he fits y'all. And I think this fits with what we got going on. We I have like good it. good running game, good offensive line, good quarterback now that he's going to be back, um, good receiver core, and then strong defense. You know, uh, we're, we're starting to fade on the defense a little bit, which is why they're doing this. The boy, man, he just came out of nowhere and just got terrible all of a sudden. They, they released him. Uh, Leonard, Gilmore? Leonard, man. Shaq oh. Leonard, once he changed his name, he stayed hurt, and now he's, like, terrible. Like, he retired I, now. Yeah, good God. He was a beast. He was, like, 31, though. Oh, he came out old. You're right. He, did, he switched his like, name when he was old. You're right. The to Jack kind of cloud everybody's judgment. He's like, I'm back. Yeah. And they're like, but he actually said, I'm my back. God, I'm getting old, man. That's he's what 31? he was saying. He, yeah, he's like 32 I'm now, in, I think. God, I'm in his rookie year. Yeah. But, yeah, that wraps up the NFL draft. Uh, half the first round recap. Like, 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 and subscribe. Follow all the things. Appreciate it, guys. Who that? Controversial. Well, I guess it's time to decide. Quest, it's time for our weekly top five. This week, because we just talked NFL draft, Mm -hmm. we're going to talk and draft our top five draft picks. You're um, our special guest, so I'm going to give you the first pick in the draft. Um, Just in case you don't know how this is going to go. All right. You're going to draft first. Okay. And then I'm going to take two picks. And then you, you. Then you're going to take two picks. Then me, me. Then I'll take my final two. Then you. And then you take your fifth and final pick. Then me. So it All gives right. us an opportunity to, uh, you know, eliminate people, but also kind of fairness yeah. of the, you know, the, the range of picks you're going to have. Um, but, yeah, top five draft picks. Whatever that means, what does it mean for you? For me, it means I'm, I'm looking at gems, um, guys who no one expected to be good, no one expected them to be what they end up being, which is all these guys on my list are Hall of Famers. Like diamonds in the rough? Diamonds in the rough. Okay. Uh, my scout team gets a raise because they did their they did their due diligence and found some guys for us. Right, fair, so fair. So I, I just think that's, that's important because, I mean, it's easy to draft a, a Patrick Mahomes top ten or – Caleb Williams number one, but to find Tom Brady in the sixth round to find your, well, you know, so that that's what I wanted to focus on. So uh, to start off, I was I was baiting because everyone's goat is one guy and my goat is someone else, and this is not because I like the team he was on. I actually hate the team he was on because I watch him beat the hell out the Saints every weekend. Um, every weekend. Well, not every weekend, but. It felt I like every, it. damn it, it felt like every weekend. No, I get it. Sometimes it feels like th- those seasons where the Saints were losing. <sighs> Way more games than they were winning. Long seasons. Those were long, long weeks. Most of those games were up at halftime. Anyways, and somehow lost the game. Right. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to go Joe Montana number one. Joe Montana. That's a good pick. And the reason I know Joe everybody. Joe Montana. Joe Montana. And the reason everybody look at him like I'm crazy and think about Tom Brady, it's the same reason why everyone argue that Michael Jordan is the GOAT over LeBron James. I mean, Joe Montana's 4-0. Yeah. Tom Brady lost to Eli freaking Manning twice. 
Yeah. And he only scored 17 points to beat him. Joe Montana was drafted third round. Uh, yeah, Joe 82nd Montana. 82nd overall. Yes, sir. Played for the 49ers. And here's the big key, though. Innovate the game. Everybody runs the West Coast offense now. Who's the first quarterback to be successful in the West Man, Coast offense? What's a West Coast offense? So, a West Coast offense. Because I'm dumb when it comes so to like that type of stuff. It's an offense predicated on getting yards after the catch. Short passes, accurate quarterback. That's why he doesn't have the strongest arm because he's going to hit short. Oh, so you're quick talking about things. like the end of Drew Brees' career? Yes. When and, he just had to do the and, slants and, and the, the, the dumb balls. right now because that's what Purdy does get the ball out quick. Uh, it's a smart quarterback who can figure things out. And he has to be very accurate. You're not really caring about who the target is. No. It's about hitting that target hitting and let guy. them I'm do their deep, job. I'm, I'm the doing defense, mine. You do yours. Find the open guy as quick as possible. My athlete's better than your athlete. What's happening? I like that. So he was the first quarterback to play in that system. And I think he's innovative. And, and it's 4-0. and He's undefeated. Uh, yes, Tom Brady has seven rings. He played for 50,000 years. Um, and I get it. You know, but he, he – he lost to freaking Eli Manning, so I couldn't put him number one because I don't think Eli Manning's a Hall of Famer. So I put him. Uh, so going to oh no, my fault. You get the next pick, don't you? Yes, sir. My fault. Sorry. Yep. So. Um, so number one. Joe you have Montana. Joe Montana. That's a very good pick. I like it. Three-time Super Bowl MVP, four-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Uh, Third-round pick. It's it's a diamond in the rough. He had an illustrious career. It's, yes. It's exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with. The obvious, yeah, obvious. You, you just said him, Tom Brady. Yeah. I mean, it to me, it's it's simple. Everybody kind of just knows he's the goat, goat, mm-hmm. seven time Super Bowl champion. I mean, it's it's an impressive career. He did most of it with the Patriots. Yes, even his losses were astounding. You know, yeah. he, he he lost in the playoffs. Except the Atlantic, the Eli Manning losses, they were terrible. He was also bailed out in the playoffs a few times. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, but it's not a one-man sport. No, no, it's an ultimate team sport. I one get man just did a lot for yes. the sport. You yes. know, seven-time. He was a five-time Super Bowl MVP. All-time leading passer. Crazy. All-time passing leader, touchdown leader. Uh, three-time NFL Who's MVP. Who's number two? Peyton Manning. Drew Brees. Oh, he did pass him yes, before? Yes, sir. Oh, damn. Who that? <laughs> Peyton Manning's number three. Yeah, he is. Respect. <laughs> Peyton. Yeah, uh, fourteen-time Pro Bowl selection, but he was so good, he only had to go to one like yeah. a couple times. You know, that's that's the that's can't, one can't of the argue. things that's really cool. It's like, oh, I'm a fourteen-time Pro Bowl, but I ain't ever seen that place. Yeah, I was worried about playing the games Super that Bowl. mattered. You know, the playoffs, Super Bowl. I was winning, and if I wasn't playing in those games, I still didn't care. Yeah, he's just that dude. I, I think it. Tom Brady. You know, all around inspiration to like the work workhorse. You know, it's it's all all of those reasons and more. You know, it's just it's strong. Um, I'm gonna go next with man. Th- th- it's already getting tough because there's so many good options, mm-hmm. but let's go with Shannon Sharp. Ooh. I like that. Fantastic tight end. One of the best in NFL history. Caught everything. Hall of Fame. Play up Shay Shay. 2011. He's absolutely yoked. Yo, still yoked. He's like 50-something. But now he's on some other stuff to, yeah, to, help, to help it keep up. Oh, know, yeah. I get it. Is it really? I'm sure. Okay. I don't how do you, how you keep up that? How do you get bigger and stronger as he you get older? Because he has continued his NFL regiment like he's still about to play. That's what he says. Okay. Like, when he retired, he stopped everything else, but he kept the workout regiment the same. Three-time Super Bowl winner? Yes. Shannon big, Sharp. Big play Shea. Big I mean, it, it it's a great great position. Probably one of the only tight ends on anybody's list. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's only a couple more. And I have a – not a problem, but I have an issue with – it's hard to – like Pat Mahomes, right? Mm-hmm. It's hard to say that he's that diamond in the rough or the gym or the great draft pick or whatever because he's not done. Yeah. You know, like, there's a bunch of good people still playing that deserve to be on a list. Yeah. But they're not done. Still playing. They're still playing. So I, I think that adds a lot. Uh, Shannon Sharp's my number two. Who do you have for your second and third? All right. So obviously second was, like I said, Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, for all the things you said, uh, five-time Super Bowl MVP, 
seven-time Super Bowl winner, uh, three-time NFL MVP, lead the league in passing, passing yards, number two is Drew Brees. Who that? Uh, so I don't have to go into detail because you did a pretty good job explaining why he's there on the list. All right. My number three is the Deacon of Defense. Deacon Jones drafted in the round that don't exist anymore, the 14th round. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they had them. They had them long rounds back in the day. Can you imagine watching the draft for 14 rounds? And they had the supplemental drafts too. Yes. So it was like, like 20, 14 rounds, and then you had another like or 15 rounds, and then you had another five rounds yeah, it was of like supplemental picks. Rounds of just draft. But and I don't think it was televised back then. So no, it was probably but, on the radio. So or they printed it in the paper each morning and like yeah, yeah, the definitely the paper. Lord. Uh, but Deacon Deacon Jones is a a, 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 thing, a funny thing to me because he's like number four or five or six. All time, but sacks had become an official stats like 1982. So I didn't know that. That's interesting. They had a guy who who watches his film from before that, so he really has 194 and a half sacks, even though that's unofficial. But officially, he has 176. Interesting. But he created the term sack. Deacon Jones, another innovator. Um, when guys change rules, they got to make a list somewhere. Um, he made it illegal to slap. He would literally come off the ball and just punch in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Which, when I saw the video, I'm like, he just pushed the shit out this dude. Yeah, like, that's a 15 that penalty. Because no one else ever did it. So he, after, he, after he, like, concussed 30,000 people and got 30,000 sacks, they made hands to their head illegal. Uh, so that's the innovational change to the game. He changed the rules. So And you're drafted in the 14th round. Just uh, like Tom Brady. Just changed like, the rules. Changed like the, the tuck rules. Tuck off. But he changed the rules not to, to cheat. To benefit more. him. I, if that didn't benefit Deacon Jones, now I can't beat you in the head. I got to do other things now. You're right. The league the league changed it to benefit But you know what them. he ended up creating after that? The club move, which was the same thing, but instead of hitting you in the head, I'm clubbing your shoulder. Right. So you have to aim lower. So, I mean, he's an innovator. Uh, when pass, and you got to think about this. All these sacks came back in the day when cats just ran the, ran the ball. Like, they didn't just pass all the time. Like, this came. That's true. When, when, the, when, the, when the NFL was a, a on the ground yeah, game. Yeah, the, the MVPs were running backs. Right. So, he got 200 sacks. Not not your boy, uh, the Bills uh, lineman, Bruce Smith, who had, who's a leader, even though he played for 60,000 years. Like, the last two, four years, he had, like, four sacks, three sacks, two sacks, one sack. I broke the record. Right. This guy was consistent. The dude stayed good. there just to break yeah. the record. Yeah. So, De- Deacon Jones is my number three guy. So, that's my two, right? That's good. Those are good picks. Um, I, I like them both. That, that's that's a strong team. It's a strong draft so far. My yeah. number three, I'm going with Terrell Davis. 1995 NFL draft. Sixth round, 196th overall. Helped win two Super Bowls. Oh, he's in my head, y'all. And he earned Super Bowl MVP Get honors. Get in my head, man. Get in my head. Yes. I'm not disagreeing with you. Terrell Davis. Just, that's it. Like, uh, Peyton put me. Peyton Manning put me on to the Broncos. I was a big, big Colts fan when he went. It for, kind of forced me to watch them. You know, you, mm-hmm. the quarterback you love. Yeah, yeah. kind of watch them. Yeah. And then it kind of made me start liking the Broncos. And then w- Wilson went to the Broncos. I was like, ah, never mind. Yeah, I know. Kind of, kind of ruined it for me. Douche. Like nobody likes Russell Wilson. He tr- you're trying too hard, Russ. Let's I know ride. you're watching. You know he's watching this. He's trying too hard, Russ. You're trying too hard. Just be yourself. That's funny. All right, number four. I'm going to go with Richard Sherman. Fifth round, 154th overall. I forgot about him. 2011 draft. They That's said they didn't think he was going to be big enough. What Didn't think he was going to be strong enough. And who did he end up being? He, he, he was the locker room. He was the leader of the Legion of Boom. He helped win their Super Bowl with mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, he emerged to be like the top corner. Yeah, he was a lockdown went, corner for he years. He stayed with the for, uh, the Seahawks for forever. Went to the 49ers. I mean, now he's a, a TV personality and he does a damn good job there. Yeah. Shout out Richard Sherman. You know that underdog came through, did a lot. Richard Sherman, my fourth pick. Man, thing about Richard Sherman is he he can't stand Harbaugh because when Harbaugh was at Stanford, Richard Sherman started as a receiver. How about kick him off the offense and say he couldn't catch and he became a cornerback? Well, isn't that usually how that goes? Yeah. Is the the cornerback is just a receiver who can't catch? Yeah, but but he ended up leading the league in and interceptions picks for like what, yeah. 10 one year, 8 one year. So it's funny, but and and uh, he actually 
Goes back and say he glad they made that move because he probably wouldn't be as good as a receiver as a cornerback. So, yeah, I like the pick. I forgot about him. Um, These lists can go deep, man. Yeah, there's there's a lot guy. of – That's a great one. 200 like, picks every on year. On that team alone, you can grab him, his his partner, the Browner kid, or the strong safety. Yeah. Uh, like, the whole Legion of Boom outside of Earl Thomas were a bunch of freaking late gems that they found and, and coached up. And like you said before, I think we had this conversation before the show started – it's all about finding guys what they do best. Right. Right? And 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 make your scheme based on what they do best and not just trying to fit a guy into a scheme, i.e. the Bears did with uh your boy Fields. Right, exactly. Fields was never a running quarterback in college, but yet you make him to a running quarterback, like this makes no sense. Anyways. Yep. Uh so I, I, yeah, that's a great one, man. Like I really forgot about uh Richard Sherman. That's a great pick. And I do not look like Richard Sherman. So if anybody thinking that, I do not. Please stop. Don't say that. I don't look like Richard Sherman. All right. <laughs> Say less. All right, so the next two of mine? Or next yeah, one you finish mine? up your draft. You got four and five. All right, well, it's getting redundant now. Uh, I got Shannon Sharp at four. Okay. Uh, seventh round draft pick from a small HBCU, Savannah State. Uh, he was a receiver at that school. Uh, uh, he made the switch because his college coach said, <laughs> and I quote, you're too slow to play tight end in the league, but you'll be a dynamic receiver, but you got to learn to block. And Shannon Sharp wasn't a big guy. He, he's still not a big guy. Well, he's big comparatively – to the average person, but the average tight end is like 6'4", 6'5", 250, 260. Shannon okay. Sharp was like 6'4", 235, 240. I'm sorry, 6'2". Right. 2, 235, 240. So it's not the biggest guy. He's blocking freaking defensive ends. That's 260, 270, 280. Back then, 280, 290. Reg Wright was 292. So these guys were big, and he's holding his own blocking. So that zone blocking scheme with the Broncos, he was a – and when you have a tight end that can set the edge – Meaning, so zone blocking scheme is meant to create alleys that's going towards the sideline, right? Right. If my tight end can hook your end, right, now my, my, my running back has that sideline, which everybody knows you shouldn't do. He was good enough to get that 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 tight end, I'm sorry, that defense in hook and climb to the next level, which that's why all the running backs were able to get all those yards. So him and number four, and I think I'm kind of biased because I love what he's doing with his post-career uh, with Club Shay Shay and all the interviews, letting the truth be told, all that good stuff. So, yeah. I'm, you know. That's fresh in the mind. Am I What's entertaining? Yeah, it's fresh entertaining. So yeah. you, you said a lot of good things about him uh, already, so I'm not going to talk more about that. And number five, another one you stole from me. Get out my brain, sir. Uh, Terrell Davis, man. Um, not the biggest Terrell Davis fan because his career was so short. I, I just thought that he's a, he would have been a Hall of Famer if he had a long career, but six years. Is that a Hall of Fame? Man, running backs don't have – this is a short yeah, shelf life. Yeah, but six years. Especially in a running game. Yeah, but six years. And, like, after those six years, one, he was hurt. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, granted, 2,000 yards, right? And he basically, Elway, you're a Super Bowl champion because of this man. Because you couldn't win before you had him, right? So, I get it. Like, I'm not a – I am a little bit of a Terrell Davis hater. I'm not going to lie to you. There you go. Uh, there's something about him. You got to lean know. into it. I got to lean into it. I'm not going to lie to you, y'all. When I was a kid, watching him score a touchdown, doing a salute, I just didn't like him. I don't know. Good guy. Good-looking guy, played sports, good running back. But I'm like, I don't like this guy. I don't know why. So, and it stuck with me. So, I'm biased. I'm sorry. Hey, man, some people you just don't like. Yeah. It just, no matter what you do, you just, people don't like you. It's all good. But can't hit them 2,000 yards. So, yeah. Yeah. My last pick, those are good picks, by the way. I know that because I picked them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, my last pick, I'm going to go with Jared Allen. He was uh, fourth, 126 overall. Kansas City Chiefs, God, 2004 draft. That was a good one. Baller ass pass rusher. Bruh, and I don't know how he was so good because he didn't look like a football player. No, he was just dominating in sacks. He had double digit sacks multiple seasons. Five All Pro selections. Chiefs and Vikings, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just dominant on the field. Um, but yeah, that's my fifth pick. Basically, what we like to do to to wrap it up is just a. You know, we each take turns just listing our picks. So just go ahead and run okay. through your top five. Okay, my top five was Joe Montana, number one, Tom Bray, number two, Deacon Jones, number three, Shannon Sharp, number four, and Terrell Davis, number five. Sweet. And my number one was Tom Brady, two, Shannon Sharp, three, Terrell Davis, four, Richard Sherman, and five, Jared Allen. I like that Jared Allen pick. That was a good pick. All right. We're back covering a preview of UFC this week is UFC St. Louis. And as you could probably guess, it's in St. Louis. 
<laughs> Headlining the card is going to be Derek the Black Beast Lewis in the heavyweight division, taking on Rodrigo Zacomea Nascimento. Before we get into that, we're going to walk through the main card opener and then walk our way all the way to the main event. Okay. Six fights on the main card. Let's start it off with another heavyweight fight. Waldo Salsa Boy Cortez Acosta taking on Robles de Spain, the big boy. This one's going to be interesting. Uh, you got the two fighters here. Cortez Acosta is 11 and 1. He's 5 and 0 by KO and mm-hmm. 1 and 0 by submission. In the UFC, or at least in his past five, he's won four out of five. Four of those fights have gone to the decision. Mm -hmm. He's won once by KO, lost once to Marcos Rogerio de Lima by decision. Despain is 5-0 in his last five, but he's 1-0 in the UFC. He took out Josh Parisian by KO in the first round at UFC 299. What do you think about this fight? What's your first thoughts going in? First, I'm, I'm looking at a guy that's 6'7", 261. Good guy. Yeah. 84-inch uh, reach. 77.8% um, um, significant strike accuracy. Like, Yeah, it's a, it's a big guy fighting a slightly smaller big guy. Yeah, yeah. 6'4", 261. So three inches. But look at the reach, though, man. 78 inches to 84 inches. Yeah, I'm not a mathematician, but to me, that looks like six inches. <laughs> and uh, if you ever have six inches of anything on anybody, you're a problem. Yeah, you know, you know according to statistics, that's pretty, you know. Uh, significant strikes <laughs> landed, like this is saying. like you're. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is only in fights in the UFC, so yeah. it does not take into account his... Um, Other stuff. Like regional circuit but in his one fight he landed 23 strikes in his knockout Mm -hmm. um over josh parisian now waldo cortez acosta he's kind of battle tested you know he's done um he's been in the ufc for a little while he's had a few fights i know a lot of times coming in and you know having that that difference in division if you will Mm -hmm kind of changes things. So how, how do you think this fight's actually going to play out? Man, I'm looking at these these stats, because I'm not going to lie and act like I know a lot about these two guys. Uh, I watch USC a lot. It's just the newer guys. Uh, it's harder for me to keep up with these days with my schedule. That's uh, fair. But I'm looking at, man, somebody's getting knocked out. Um, if I had to guess, I'm thinking your boy uh, Waldo's getting knocked out, because uh, the Spain is 5-0, five, oh, five knockouts. So yeah. Statistics say he's probably going to become 6-0 and with six knockouts. Um, the Waldo, I don't know why I'm saying Waldo because I don't want to mess his last name up, is a decision guy. Decision, 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 one KO. Right. So he's going to try to stretch the fight out, but if one guy's trying to knock you out and one guy's trying to uh, stretch it out, either one or two things are going to happen. Either someone's going to get knocked out or someone's going to get gassed. Uh, so I think someone's going to get knocked out, so I'll go with Despain. Okay. So uh, Despain is 100% as a favorite. Uh, he is the current favorite, minus okay. 218. Uh, Cortez has never been the underdog in a fight in the UFC. Really? Yeah. Might wake something up. Um, Might spark something. Yeah, you never know. It, you know? it, it depends. I'm going to go as well, and I'm going to lean with you. I'm going to go Robin Le Despain for my pick as well. I think he's going to uh, I think he's gonna win. I think he's probably going to finish Waldo Cortez Acosta, if I actually had to uh, absolute guess on that one. Uh, Let's move on to the featherweight division. Featherweight division is 145 pounds. Alex Ciceras taking on Sean Woodson. You got Ciceras, who uh, he's an impressive fighter. He's 21 and 14 in his career. A lot of fights. A lot of fights. Good God. He's three and two in his last five, three decisions. One KO, one sub. Uh, he does a lot of fight nights. This is kind of like the same tier as a fight night. Yeah. It's just not in the apex. Uh, it's at a named location, so they give it UFC St. Louis. Um, Ciceros is good, man. He's hard to beat, but Woodson, Woodson's so damn tall. He's such a big guy in the 162. 6'2", two at a, the 145 pound. That's, that's right. huge. He's a big problem. He's 11 1 and 1 in his career. He's known as the sniper. I mean, he's 
four and zero oh and one in his yeah. last five. He lost or he drew uh, against Saldana at UFC two seventy eight. But he's winning by decision. He's long. He's hard to keep it on on the ground. Charles Jordan is a notable wrestler in the yeah. UFC. He beat him. He could not. Charles Jordan could not keep him on the ground. Sean Woodson's so long. Ciceras, you know, statistically speaking, he does go to the ground sometimes. He does look for submissions. This is one where I think, you know, the favorite's going to win as well. I think Sean Woodson's going to win here. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Sean, uh, Sean Woodson is listed at 6'2", 145, but let's keep it honest. He's probably walk around at what? Probably like 165, 170. 170. That's huge, man. And also taking take into account that reach advantage, 78 inches to 73 and a half, yeah. three and a half. Another situation where we have a tall guy versus a short guy relative, relative to each other. Um, not going to keep this too long. I think Sean Winston wins by, like, knockout, maybe, what, first, second round. That's fair. The dude's got long hands, he's, and he's got power behind him. Yeah. Next, keeping it relatively small, guys. Lightweight division, 155 pounds. Diego Ferreira. Taking on Matus Rebecki. So Ferreira, two and three in his last five. He's been finished all three of those losses. Not good. But his most recent fight was a knockout victory. You know, maybe is is that kind of the the comeback tour? You know, we don't know. We'll see. Rebecki, on the other hand, is five and zero in his mm-hmm. last five. 3-0 and in the UFC. He's got one decision win, one KO win, mm-hmm. one submission win. He's 19-1 and in his career. I mean, he's lost literally the one time. He's a heavy favorite at minus 425. A southpaw fighter, which, as uncommon as they are in other sports, they're more common in the UFC, but they're just as hard as a thing to yes, deal with. Especially with an orthodox uh, fighter. You're right. You're right. Um, Ferreira, on the other hand, against Southpaws is two and four. So it makes me want to go with the betting favorite, Matus Rebecki. I think he's going to keep that undefeated UFC record and move to 4 and 0 in the UFC. So, once again, another reach advantage, but we're going to go with the guy with the shorter reach, all because, I mean, look at the stats. Um, one guy mixes up a little more, does look like his finishes are different. He got subs, he got TKOs, he got decisions, so he can do a little bit of everything. And he and, and he is it's, it's that it's that southpaw. Whenever you watch a fight and you have a southpaw versus an orthodox, I mean orthodox, that jab that comes straight down, it's killer, man. Yeah, it's like it's like a blind person. <laughs> man, you never yeah. see it because you used, never see it coming. You used to an orthodox fighter throwing that right. It's like yeah, ah, so ah. you never see it coming. So it's always a problem. This guy's two and four. He's proven that. He sucks against Southpaw, so I'm going to go I want everybody to know that I, I, I can punch, but I was going over the arm of the microphone stand. He can't punch, y'all. He's lying. So, well, he it wasn't him. as bad as it should. <laughs> it it looked, looked. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm glad you was honest and told it yourself, because that was... Woo. You pick Rebecca? I'm picking Rebecca. All right, let's move on, because I don't want to relive this moment any longer. <laughs> Next up, moving to the big boys, because we're moving further into the card, mm-hmm. and they get heavier as we go. Well, not really the whole time. They get heavy, then they get light, then they get real heavy. Uh, Alonzo Atomic (coughs) Minifield, he got what he wanted. He asked for... I'm sorry, Joaquin Buckley asked for this fight. Minifield is fighting Carlos Olberg. Okay. This is going to be a good fight. You got 15-3-1 Minifield taking on Olberg, who's 10-1. Both guys... Haven't lost in a while. You know, uh, Menafield drew to Crute, but then they fought again, and he subbed him. Olberg's 5-0 and in his last five. Been in the UFC for, you know, a little while. This is going to be a good fight, an impressive fight. This one, this is where power is going to come into play a lot. You know, the odds are plus 220 for Menafield, minus 270 for Olberg. Mm-hmm. But more importantly than that, Power comes into play where like odds matter way less because it takes these these boys like one hit to just completely yeah, yeah. unfold these the other guys' Some life. Big guys, man. Um, it's gonna be impressive. What do you think? What do you think's the game plan coming in? Well, I think one guy's gonna mix it up and one guy's gonna just throw hands because I'm looking at these records and your boy o- uh, Oberg is knocking guys out. Uh, yeah. 
And the thing that kind of baffled me a little bit was his takedown accuracy. Am I looking at 77% here for uh, Oberg? Or am I misreading that, that information right there? Takedown yeah, accuracy. Yeah, of the ones he shoots, he, he hits him three quarters of the so time. So that means that's, that's pretty good. Now, the, the downside there is he on average shoots one per match. Exactly. So, so it's like it kind of de- it depends. the numbers a little bit. So, but, I mean, it's there. Yeah. So that means he's a mixed martial artist, and this other guy looks like a guy who throws hands. And it also looks like when he does get the takedown, mm-hmm. or, yeah, when he shoots the takedown, he's attempting a submission as yes, well. Yes, yes, I see that. So, too. like, yeah. there's there's finishing or finishing at attempts at least yeah, going on. Yeah, I'm not on. just taking it down to lean on it and get control time, so I win with any nasty decision. And he does have two um, two submission victories. So there you go. Most recently, a submission victory against Jung at USC 293 where uh, Strickland took the belt from Ah, Izzy. Um, This is also going to be a good one. I think Olberg is going to continue his rise. Um, You know, he hasn't lost since March of 2021, his UFC debut. Mm -hmm. He's, what, 5-0 since then. I think he's going to continue that. I I know Menefield's, you know, he's a a bad problem being 4-0-1 in his last five. Yeah. But... He lost that decision to William Knight. Jimmy Crute is a is a bad dude as well, but drawing that time, it shows that he's beatable. Allberg has been in fighting in dominant form recently. You know, he's, he's had that submission go to the <clears> end, <throat> but most of his fights are ending pretty early. I think Jimmy Crute or Carl, Carlos Allberg. Sorry, I just was looking at Crute's name again. Carlos Allberg for the victory here. Uh, I was going to agree with you. But I feel like being a little bit controversial. That's fair. Uh, significant strikes. He he has a pretty decent number, which means I'm hitting you hard in places that matter, right? Yep. Uh, is that like 67, 68 percent? Shots that do damage, right? The most damage. That hurt. That hurt. Yeah. So and I'm looking at his losses. It's not to scrubs like o- Ovin St. Pru in 2020 when he was actually still decent. You're right. Uh, so he he's facing veterans. He's beaten a few veterans as well. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to take Menfield. Alonzo. That's nice. What's his, what's his nickname again? Atomic. Atomic. God, it's a terrible nickname. No, it's not bad. Alonzo Atomic. At least he's a knockout hitter, so he's yeah, like, I got that atomic power. Yeah, I guess it's not bad. Something like that. So I'm going to go with the upset, Menfield. Now, this next one is the one that Buckley was asking for. He was trying to fight UFC St. Louis. That's the one I thought I was saying. Mm-hmm. He's taking on Nersultan Ruzaboev. Another tall guy. Another good guy. Nersultan Ruzaboev's very good. He's two fights into the UFC, but he's 5-0 and in his last five. 34-8-2 in his career. 12-1 and by KO and 20-1 and by submission. Joaquin Buckley is a knockout artist, but he's been knocked out a couple times. 18-6 and in his career. 13 and 4 by KO, never been subbed. Typically, his fights don't go to the ground because he's swinging. Yeah. This is a big fight. Everybody knows the Buckley name. New Mance is the nickname. So Buckley asked for him? Buckley asked to, asked to fight at UFC St. Louis. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he fought uh, in March, at the end of March, and he won by KO first round. So he's okay, like, oh, I'm so still fresh. fresh. Okay. Let me ask for St. Louis. They booked it real quick, and bada bing, bada boom, hey, we're here. Man, that's two months ago. Good guy. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess one round, you're still fresh. Man, Both guys guy, fought on the same card. This guy has a hundred percent takedown uh, accuracy. In the UFC, yeah, he's only fought twice. And he's averaging like like almost four takedowns. Or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty significant. He knocked out both those guys uh, in the UFC, so okay. he took him down. A lot of that was like he was beating the shit out of him, mm-hmm. and then he like took him down and then ground and pound for the finish. Okay, okay. I get you. I get you. Um, I get you. But yeah, uh, he did. He's dominant so far in the UFC. He looks like a monster. Talking about Ruzabov, that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Buckley, I mean, Buckley's a great fighter in his own right. He's a southpaw. Southpaw's a good thing. Ruzabov is kickboxing. That's yeah. one of those things where they yeah. throw those kicks from anywhere at any time for any reason. There, it's a toss up on the odds. Anything can happen here. I, I would think there'd be more reach to him being five ten versus six five, but the reach is the same. I go with the Uzbek. 
I'm feeling their salt, and I thought he was going to win both his fights coming into the UFC, once against uh, Cedric Dumas and then the other against uh, Bruno Ferreira. Mm -hmm. Joaquin Buckley has crazy knockout power, but I think Rizabov is more well-rounded, which is going to cause cause the fight to kind of lean towards Rizabov's favor. So this guy looks bigger than 170. Both these guys look, look huge. Yeah, they're both going to be fighting at like 200 pounds. At 200 pounds, which is crazy. They're going to weigh so in at 170. Away, and just that's so unhealthy for your liver. Be completely yoked. But, um, <clears throat> ooh, tough one. Uh, I'm going to go with, was the Sultan his name? Nur Sultan Ruzabov. Nur Sultan Ruzabov. Yeah. I'm going to go with him. Not going to actually act like I know about these guys because I have no freaking idea who these guys are. I've heard of Buckley a little bit. And I heard rumblings of this new guy who, who, who you know, from not from here and this that third, but looking at the stats and whatnot, I mean, I'm gonna go with just go with the uh, the favorite right now, and uh, hopefully that works for me. Yeah, hope hope it hope it pans out. Hope it pans out. All right, let's go to the main event. There we go. Which is sure to not last the whole fight, in my no, opinion. Somebody's getting knocked the hell out. Uh, black the black beast, <laughs> Derek Lewis. His balls were hot. Took his shorts off, all the things. <laughs> this is going to be an exciting fight. I think, like I said, it's going to be an, uh, an under kind of fight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a knockout. Derek Lewis is currently projected to, to be the favorite, minus 162. Really? Uh, Nascimento is strong, just as strong. Yeah. But. But is he knockout strong? More of a more of a ground game. Yeah. Yeah. Not leaning on the ground game from Nascimento, but he has more of a ground game. He's got six submission victories, uh, never been subbed, two and one by KO, wins a bunch by decision. Yeah. Derek Lewis is twenty-two and seven by KO and one and two by sub. So if you get Derek Lewis on the ground, it's hard to him for him to get back up. If yeah. you can hold him, it's a big boy. Right. It's hard to get three hundred pounds up. If he ever get in shape, <clears throat> if he ever got in shape, shape, I wonder how. I'm gonna wonder he did get in shape. A little run here to the title. Uh, a few, a uh, few fights ago. I think probably his last loss. He had a six pack. Really? Big boy had a six pack. It was crazy. Wow. No, no, no. Was it Popeye's commercial that he had? He like Popeye's chicken. Or it something was like huge. That? But what yeah, uh, Derek. This is gonna be a knockout. I do not see these boys lasting to the cards. I, j I just don't see it. I think it's gonna be. Because Almeida in Derek Lewis's last fight, it's a big wrestling problem. Mm -hmm. I think knowing that you're coming into another wrestler, it's gonna like your camp's gonna be aiming for that twice in a row. So I think he's just thinking about wrestling. Yeah. Thinking about being able to defend it. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with the Derek Lewis knockout. Uh Nascimento, that's how I said. Rodrigo Nascimento. He tries to submit people a lot. Which is looking at his stuff, um, <clears throat> which, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, I mean, Derek Lewis hits so freaking hard, man. He does. Like, good guy. Like, he's always in a fight because he's just got to touch you one time. If you got a guy trying to submit you versus a guy that's, that's, that's going to try to, like, brawl and strike with you, as long as Derek Lewis doesn't, Derek Lewis doesn't get taken down, I see him winning this fight. He gets taken down, I see him look like a beach wheel on that ground. Like, he just cannot get up. Uh, a turtle on his back. So, and then you have a guy who's a Brazilian uh, black, a jiu-jitsu black belt on top of you who has some submissions, uh, but he has been knocked out too. In 2020 was the last time he was knocked out. So, I'm going to go ahead and pick Derek Lewis because, I'm sorry, I like Derek Lewis. I and, like Derek Lewis and too. And he's just like the guy who never goes away. It's hard for bias not to set in when you're doing a bunch yeah. of picks as well. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I like Derek Lewis. I like the picks. This is going to be a good week at UFC. But, yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up everything. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for coming, Mark West. Thanks for having it's me, been fun. Uh, check us out next week where we recap um, UFC St. Louis and we move forward back to another Apex card, UFC Fight Night, Barbosa versus oh, Murphy. He's still fighting. Yeah, it's a Barbosa still fighting at 38. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Thanks, guys. Love you all. Bye. Peace.